Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Club Maryland's round four action of the Bowls New South Wales Platinum Pennant. Featuring the home side Maryland's up against their Sydney counterparts, the Belrose Bulls. Perfect day here in Western Sydney, mid 20s temperature, not much breeze, so we should be in for great action. The rink we're featuring there as the players just complete their trial ends. Team skipped by Aaron Sheriff from Maryland's up against Belrose skip Dylan Fisher. On screen there, you'll see our competition ladder, the Magic. Just sitting in fourth position at the moment. Two wins out of their opening three fixtures. The Belrose Bulls yet to record a master board win. So a crucial game here today. They've got one and a half rink points at this stage. So they'll be really pushing for a victory here to try and get up a little bit closer to that top five. As we said for Maryland's a chance to consolidate that position. Our top five teams progressing through to finals. See so the team list there for Marylands. The top four players will be on our streaming rink. Leading up Heath, Lu Heath Lewis, followed by Jeremy Roach, Peter Harry, and as we said, Aaron Sheriff skipping this rink. Across the greens, plenty of other superstars in action there for Marylands. There are the rinks skipped by current Jackaroo, Cody Packer. New South Wales over 40 skip Sean Thompson, skipping the other side. Plenty of other well credentialed players will go through throughout the course of the afternoon. And for Belrose here on our rink, Steve Lowe, Steve Glidden, John Campton, and Dylan Fisher. And once again, there are other rinks skipped by Matty Flapper and Matt Blackburn. And plenty of well credentialed players here for the Belrose Bulls as well. A little bit surprising to see that they haven't. Registered a win yet, so they'll be hoping today's the day for them. Joining me to kick off commentary this afternoon, a Club Marylands member and a member of the Bowls New South Wales State Junior Squad, Sam Rich. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. So, mate, the side played here last night. Did you get to see much of the, the Marylands guys in action? Oh, I was just trying to look over every now and again because I was playing over over the other rinks on the, in the threes, but, yeah, it was... What I've seen, it was pretty good, yeah. Good competition and everything. Yeah, so, round three fixtures last night for those who haven't caught up with the action. Marylands 56 defeated Carlingford 49 in quite a close encounter here at Club Marylands. And for Belrose, unfortunately, a home loss to St John's Park, 38 shots to 63. Our other fixtures in round number three, it was Mount Lewis with an away win at Tarrant Point, 58-52. The Warilla Gorillas just overcame Engadine Cougars in a cracking match on the indoor at Warilla, 59-48. It was a lot closer than what that scoreline suggests. Cabramatta Bull Ants, 59-45 over the Wenny League's Magpies. And if you joined us last night on the live stream up in Newcastle, it was Raymond Terrace winning that local derby against East Maitland, 68 shots to 39. So there's plenty to play for here. Players just about halfway through their trial ends. So Sam, you're in the grade three side here at Marylands at the moment? Yeah. What position are you playing um, there, mate? I'm leading up for Jenny Clark. Okay. How's that been? This is your first year down here at Marylands? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that was your opening fixture last night too, mate, wasn't it? I think you had a washout yeah. last weekend. Yeah, against the Castle Hill it was, I think. It... So the... Just to remind if you haven't done your tips... Make sure you get into the tipping competition. Register all your tips for round four. And, of course, a reminder that round five tomorrow afternoon, big thank you to our partners from P&O. We've got a fantastic cruise as the overall winning prize. Plenty of other random prize draws to be done as well. So if you're not on top at the moment, try and get your way to the top. But if not, there's other prizes up for grabs as well outside of that fantastic cruise from P&O. Other fixtures here in round number four at 1.30pm. It's Mount Lewis taking on East Maitland. 
and the rest of our games in round four later on this afternoon or this evening. Carlingford Koalas play host to the Raymond Terrace Jets at 4 p.m. Marilla Gorillas at home again on the indoor to Wente League's Magpies. That match getting underway at 4.30. At 5 p.m., Cabramatta, Bull Ants. They're on the undercover carpet against Tarrant Point at 5 o'clock. And 6 o'clock, our last match in round four. We'll see Engadine Cougars at home to St. John's Park Saints. Should be plenty of good games going on. So if you are in and around the Sydney or Wollongong region, try and make your way to one of those fixtures this afternoon. If you're a little bit further afield, stay tuned on our coverage throughout the course of this game. We'll be able to get you some updates on the Mount Lewis first East Maitland fixture. And for those games later on this evening, you'll be able to get end-by-end updates on the Bowls Link results portal. Search up Bowls New South Wales and you'll see that Platinum Pennant competition come up. You can follow those end by end scores as the teams put those in throughout the course of the game. So they're about to kick off. Sam, just a reminder, we've got our state junior championships next week. You'll be looking forward to that one, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, playing with Tom in the pairs and in the fours. I'm with Sophie Payne, Katie Ashley and Tom again. Uh, they're all Club Maryland's players as well. We'll be hoping for a few good days down there at Warilla for our state junior championships. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good time. We've got about 100 juniors making their way down to Warilla next week. So the club's stocked up supplies in the restaurants, the cafes and the bars. Should be a great week. How did you go last year, Sam, in the juniors? Um, I only went down for the fours. Um, I didn't make it through my section, but it was just good experience and everything, so I had a good time. We're about to get underway, so it'll be Mary Lance to kick things off here on end number one. Heath Lewis, for those that saw some of their state championships out at Dubbo, Heath, the... Winner of the Triples Championship. We've got all three of those Triples players here in action today. And surprisingly, in some aspects, they're split across three different rinks. First one there from Heath. She's in the ditch side of the green. We'll see where our players end up throughout the course of the day. And Steve Lowe down the same side. Always something to take note of when you go to another venue. Watch what the home side does. See, we sort of arced at that on the junior training squad. We talk about yeah, following the locals. Shorty by Heath. Yeah, super correction right on top of the jack there. See a couple of marquees here at the club this year, Sam. Have you had a chance to have much conversation with either Nathan Rice or Aaron Sheriff? Um, not a proper conversation, but like I said, hi to him and met him last night. It was good, like... And then had a good chat with Cody as well. So, yeah, Cody Packer, obviously new to the club as well from yeah. WA, taking up a role with the bowls department here at the club. So, still just that one shot to Maryland's at the moment. Steve Glidden on the mat for Bell Rose. Just a bit overweight here with his first. One's a good spot at the back of the rink, though. Well 
Jeremy Roach there, just past the jack as well. A little bit of a grimace here from Glidden. Quite like it out of the hand, although it's finishing off okay. Good second shot there. Yeah, got a nice round of applause there from his skip. Right, both thirds now make their way back. Play their bowls. You say you're leading up in your pennant, mate. Are you one yeah. that likes to follow your bowls down, or do you yeah. stay with the team? What, what's your I preference? just follow it down. Go up with the skip? Yeah. What's Jenny been like to play for? Yeah, she's been good. Like, played well, just good support and everything, so... We see Peter Harry jumping onto the mat. His first of the match down on his back end. He's trying to beat that last bowl of Steve Glidden. Gets past the front. Well, just catches a Belrose bowl. Opportunity here for Belrose. Johnny Campton. His own bowl to work up. Also just under, but that'd be three seconds probably now to Belrose. So important that Harry gets another one in here. Certainly past the front. Will really he pull up in time? Not quite, so Campton with an opportunity just underneath his own bowl. Good weight with his first, just needs to be a fraction wider. Oh, just didn't quite get the ideal contact. He may have just shut off direct access to that shot bowl. So, we'll see how skips make their way. Back to the mat. Have you seen much of Dylan play before, Sam? No, not really. And no doubt most of our viewers watching on will have seen Aaron Sheriff at some point in time. So Dylan, a current Victorian state skip. I can let you know, Sam. And these two gentlemen, Aaron and Dylan, played the 2022 Australian Indoor Singles Final. Very good opener there from Aaron first up. Similar shot though for Dylan reaching up on the back end. Just needs to miss this pack of bowls at the front. To be conscious not to bump this jack out. So hoping to miss his own, and he has. That's going to be close. Dylan just made his way about halfway down the green just to get a gauge. Do you think you'll play a bit quicker here, Sam? Yeah, maybe. To find that right line to his own Maroon Bowl coming in. So and he's just going to bend underneath the ideal line. Well, it does flick his own bowl up for second shot. So that'll be one to Marylands to kick things off. Now across the greens. Now rink next to this streaming game for Marylands. Tom Rich, Mick Harry, Nathan Rice and Cody Packer. And they're up against Ethan Scott Brannigan, Rowan Dennis, Brad Franklin and Matt Flapper. And rink number three this afternoon for Marylands. Tony Wood, Michael Clark, Jack McShane and Sean Thompson. Against Steve Kerr, James Brown, Steve Ashtown, and Matt Blackburn for Belrose. Good start there by Heath again. A 
as the local Sam, what do you know about the green? Is this sort of a wider hand or a narrow hand? Oh, that back end there that um, Steve was just playing, it's normally tighter. Like, it's always running around that 14, 15. Like, it's a good green. Well, just before we went live, we asked Aaron Sheriff, didn't we, what, what speed the green was running and being the um, articulate to detail and preparation in, that Aaron is, said, yeah. I haven't put a bowl down yet, but he believes it's about 14 and a half. Yeah. Interesting watching Aaron, he, the first two or three bowls of the roll-up, he watched from side on, just a bit of a, a gauge on the speed. Put a fit there by Lowy. Jeremy Roach, the 2 4 Marylands here. Former finalist in the state over 40 pairs competition. A few club titles here at Marylands to his name as well. All six bowls short of Jack High. Jack just lengthened out a little bit here on end number two, so there may be a slight difference in speed going back in this direction towards the other green. Uh, not shot there from Jeremy, but well and truly in the game at the back. Still just finding their range going back in this opposite direction. Looks like one to Marylands. So your first year down here at the club, mate. Where, where were you at previously? Which club? I uh, we was at Mudgy Bowling Club. Playing down there. Just decided to come up here. You know, Tom got an opportunity in the Platinum. And um, just better competition and everything down here in Sydney, so... So your brother, Tom, part of that triples men's state winning side a few weeks ago. And as you said, leading here in the platinum for Cody Packer on the next rink yeah. across. Still living down there too, Mudgy? Yeah, we travel down every week, so... Camden just going through as well, so... Peter Harry here with a chance. Had pretty good weight with his first. So he needs to draw underneath his own. Been through some surgery recently, Pete. Had some issues with knees and hips over the last 18 months or so. We got that fixed up. Yeah. As we said, he had the weight with his first. Just corrected that line. Camden hoping not to find that gap again. Well, it's their own bowl moving forward. Oh, that's going to be enough for second. So one shot to the Harry bowl. So remind if you just joining our coverage, this is round number four of the Bowls New South Wales Platinum Pennant. At the fantastic club Marylands as they host the Belrose Bulls in round four. Both teams with differing starts to the season so far. The Bulls without a win at this stage after three games. Marylands two wins and one loss. Sheriff's just pushing that 
bowl forward, but not quite enough, so it is still just the one. Just a draw to the tee for Fisher. Sheriff just pa pausing there on the mat. Just we'll hit the option to sit through the maroon bowl that Belrose have. Any contact with the front's only bringing his own bowls forward. We'll see just under ditch weight here from Sheriff. with that he just tried the draw not trying to sit it so he's still just one right. let's check out Dylan's line here got a feeling he might be into that front wall of bowls uh, skips make no change and Maryland's double their advantage Two ends played. 2 nil. You'll see our scoreboard's updated. Top right-hand corner of your screen is our master board and the three individual rink boards down the bottom. Once again, a big thank you to our broadcast partners, Spacequake Sports. Really hope you've been enjoying the Platinum Pennant coverage. Great new partnership being developed between Bowls New South Wales and Spacequake Sports. You'll see throughout the afternoon, three different camera operators here at the venue along with the technical director keeping all those fantastic angles that you like to see in the game. Another great start there by Heath. A really good balls he's played down in this direction. Come on, Lowy. Steve Lowe, not good, too far away. That can just pull up before the ditch, and it has. Lewis. Two perfect balls to kick off end number three. No doubt that's what you were doing in the grade three side last night, Sam, leading up like that. I actually played all right, which I'm pretty happy with myself. So. Yeah, uh, very important part of the game. You need to celebrate when you do play well and self-evaluate. And if you haven't had the best game, work out why and what you can do different next time. ones there. Kick off for Marylands. Might be one of those ones where you attack early. Call there from Dylan Fisher. You pick your own weight. I see some bowls moving around here. So Steve Glidden given the license to play up to this. Not going to move far but will he change angles in a positive way? Well, it's not too bad. Now that's sitting. Uh, Aaron looking for cover around the back. <laughs> Ideally, Sam is probably looking, asking for a bit more weight than he yeah. wasn't he? Let's see with that angle change. Well, Jeremy Rush has chipped that bowl across. So, very close for shot there at the moment. Now Glidden can play a very similar weight to his first. Yes, 
Very close. Yeah, what contacts are you going to get? Blue onto the jack. He kicks it back to his own for one. Right, much the same as his first. You get another grade further across the green here today. Sam, do you know what grade that is over there? Um, I believe it's a fives playing. And five, so Maryland's up against Carlingford over there in the grade five. Maryland's belonging to zone number 10 here in Sydney. And for a lot of these players, this will be their first pennant match of the season with round one washed out last week. And Peter Harry, close to contact here. Can he find his way through to the ball? And he has. What a great shot from Peter Harry. You see that replay on screen. There's a tiny gap for him to work his way through. It's a little touch off the green. Through to the shot bowl. And sits there for a few. No mucking around here from Camden. Plenty of weight. What contacts he find? Well, it gets his own through. So his ball stays, but it will be three currently to Marylands. Aaron Sheriff just looking at the angles there at the moment. Quite see the call there from Aaron, mate. Did you just want one round the back? Green. Green. Looks like he's just trying to draw it. Uh, it's awesome, mate. Another good ball there, yeah, boy. That's going to be four. Uh, it's up and at him for Bill Rose here. Camden. Well, you can see the facial expression there. He didn't like that early on. Uh, he's pulled it just underneath the line, so. Skips go down to the mat. It's four there at the moment for the Maryland side. A super conversion there from Peter Harry. It's a pretty good start for Bell Rose on some of the other rinks. Matt Flapper 5 0 up now over Cody Packer. Up a count of four on the last end. Matt Blackburn started off winning his first end as well over Sean Thompson. Uh, Sheriff's first goes into the ditch there, so looking for that cover bowl. So it will be Fisher. Be nice and firm at this. See that angle from the mat there a little while ago. He has got access to the jack. Oh, just picks one bowl out. Super effort. So three. We'll see Aaron back on the draw now. Chance to get inside that dark green jack high bowl. For another counter. Not a bad one, good shot there. Uh, that'll be far out. Aaron choosing the Aero Revolution, quite a wide drawing bowl. Big finish on his. Uh, Fisher, very much the same bowl, he'll collect the jack. Uh, he's picked a couple out there. I'll just be determining whether it's two or three, whether Aaron's last bowl made it into the count or not. Get 
A little bit unlucky with his first. Dylan Fisher just to pick that bowl out without making contact with the jack. Uh, that head very well set up. Heath Lewis, if you remember, two touches in the lead position. Glidden made shot for Belrose, but then it was Peter Harry come through and sitting out the bowl. It will be two. All right, Maryland's continuing to double their score here on our streaming rink. Four shots to nil. Over on other rinks, as we said. Matt Flapper now 5 nil in front of Cody Packer. And on rink number three, Sean Thompson has hit back. He now leads two shots to one over Matt Blackburn. Sheriff's going to be invoicing Heath Lewis for a, a, a touch of spray, the way this is going. He's had four touches in the opening seven bowls. And certainly in the last three. Good reply there by Steve. Uh, very good shot. Still got school in Mudgee, right? Yeah. What year are you up to at the moment? I'm in the year 10 and at the moment. Any plans for when you finish? Oh, I'm doing work experience at the bowling club there with both of my brothers, so hopefully I can come out and be a greenkeeper. You know, helps with bowls and everything, so... A long-term plan to try and be in Sydney somewhere, mate, and get a job yeah, with one of the clubs. Yeah. right up to it just not quite getting shots so it's Glidden with first opportunity even though he's holding trying to change this head up trail the jack through was the call gets a touch but the jack's still available both teams are going to be after this jack now Really push through this. Jeremy Roach, what have you got? Uh, kicked it through to the ditch. And make enough for shot. Shot ball will be just under a metre away. The call there was to get Steve Glidden's touch up through to the ditch. That maroon ball. Just gone underneath the line. So. How confident can these guys be drawing right up to the ditch here? Right? Have you had much experience at that in your time oh, here at the club? No, not really. Just yeah. a Very good green staff here. Both Adam and Ben do a fantastic job. Relatively new to the club too, I think. They've only been here a few months, yeah. both those guys. Young Ben was actually going to spend a bit of time in commentary today, but he shied away. Yeah, he was saying that last night. Talking himself up, was he? Yeah. Saying, like, I should do it and everything because he's doing it. Yeah, he's not even here. 
he told me before he left the venue this afternoon that he's trying to sell a vehicle. So, taking for his word. Now he's got a lot of fans out there too, Ben, so plenty of people disappointed. Yeah. After the touch is still, that Maroon Bowl. Flicks another one up. Could be close to the count. But Harry was pretty close with his first. Halfway between where his bowl was and the ditch would be ideal. Count. What does he do with his touches? Does he block off the angles to it? Certainly changed it. Dylan's just going to have a really good look to see whether it's one or two down at the moment. Oh, look. Peter Harry, he's not where he wanted, but he, he just yeah. taken away that clean direction to the shot bowl. to just point up short. I was feeling a little bit of breeze against the direction that they're playing at the moment. It's in the first few bowls on end number two down in this direction. A few minutes ago, we're pulling up short. It's just slightly against that little bit of breeze that there is. I think it's probably only about five to eight kilometres an hour, but just doing enough... to affect the play, so Sheriff with his first, just needs it to pull up. He's just overweight with his. They're carrying just over a metre too much on that occasion. Uh, Fisher, how far past the front bowls will he go? there from Peter Harry as he thinks that last bowl of Dillard Fish has done enough for shot. So does Aaron try and play for the bowl? So I think this will be a firm forehand runner from Sheriff. Can he get that last bowl? Snuck his way through, but didn't quite make contact with the shot bowl. Went awfully close. A matter of millimetres away, so... Dylan Fisher, does he get all the way up to his first? Looks a little bit less. Is he going to fall down and push his own a little closer? Guys are just waiting potentially to see if that bowl drops down. <laughs> well, it has fallen, but it didn't quite make contact with his first. Get the measure out. Always hard to judge these with one bowl in the ditch and one bowl up on the green. But it is the bowl of Dylan Fisher. So Bell Rose get underway here on rink number one. Their first score. And a severe change of length being called for with the mat right back on the tee. And Fisher standing right on the 21 metre mark. So change of plan we go just past that minimum distance around at about 24 meters probably about three meters past that minimum
your preference when you play, Sam? Where you like the Matt and the Jack to be? Oh, just wherever I'm playing well at, you know. Last night I just kept going long. I was playing well there, so... I was thinking you can have a plan going into the game, but sometimes yeah. conditions will make you go one way or the other. Those players still just adjusting to this. Change of length. See those scores at the bottom of your screen there. 4 1 the advantage for two of the Maryland sides. It's Matt Flapper's rink keeping Melrose well in this at the moment. Six shots to nil in front. Over Cody Packer. Uh, eight apiece on our master board at the moment. Just a reminder about some of the other round four matches in play. All 12 sides in action this afternoon and this evening. Just about to get underway at Mount Lewis. A 1.30 start is the Lions up against East Maitland. You see Jeremy Roach, a bit of a touch off the front bowl. 4pm, it'll be Carlingford playing host to Raymond Terrace. 4.30pm start. Wenny Leagues make the trip down to the Illawarra to take on Warilla. At 5pm, Cabramatta hosting Tarrant Point. And at 6pm, it's the Engadine Cougars at home to St. John's Park. Triple header for all our sides this weekend, so plenty of bowls. Will be five out of eleven rounds played at the conclusion of tomorrow. You've seen some of the teams, Sam, throughout, and would have looked at some of the squads online and through our social media channels. Yeah. Obviously, you're cheering for Marylands, but yeah. who do you think are a couple of dangers that may cause Marylands some problems? Um, well, obviously, like you know, you like Cabra. Um, Warilla, um, St John's, East Maitland, mostly all of them really. Are, <laughs> like, yeah. They're all good sides, yeah. mate, aren't they? Yeah. Just a little bit wide there, so I still wonder to Mary Lance. Yeah, I know certainly in the office we've been putting in our tips in the Pino tipping competition. A bit of a banter between all the staff in the office and it is awfully hard every round to do the tips and to try and get them right. I went crook on my mates from Maryland, uh, from Rilla, sorry, last week who cost me a perfect round in round number one by getting beat. Maybe just outside the line here again. Well, pushing bowls in, so it's still Maryland's holding one. That bowl of Jeremy Roach just past Jack Hoyt. First one in here is going to have a big say. Drawing up or a little touch. Yeah, and that polar pedal Harry's not quite counting, but it makes it a little bit more difficult for the opposition. We'll wait until the conclusion of this end, and we'll run through our competition ladder as it sits after three rounds. No, Fisher. Down on his forehand, just trying to get past that last one of Peter Harry.
Murphy White for that. Nice confident draw here for Aaron. Got his own ball to come up. Yeah, that's going to count. Goes all right, that Aaron Sheriff, doesn't he? Aggressive option here for Fisher. There is a combination up the front which will come through. Almost aiming at the gap where the jack is. If he gets the an aqua bowl at the front, it can work its way through. Well, but gets bowl through bowl there. Both Maryland shot bowls go out. So it's now Belrose with three. Gets all their closest bowls out. Sheriff. About two feet over with his first, even though he counted. So it's a coughing draw up here again. Three down. See that bowl there from Dylan Fisher. It's Peter Harry's orange up through the front to take out the two nearest bowls. Not Sheriff on the draw. Just looking to hold up to the wall of bowls here. He gets past the front. He's going to be good enough. Yes, a bit short. So, uh, ideal result there from Dylan. I think it's three to Belrose. The guys will just confirm for us, and it is. Uh, we're levelled up here on our feature rink. Uh, no surprise, it's the same tactic again. The big conversions the last two ends, mate, from Dylan. He, yeah. He was down at the other end with that jack in the ditch, drew the yeah. shot up towards the edge, and then that one there again. One down on the crossover. Turns it into a three-shot result with that last drive. And Aaron just pulling up short with his last. Similar distance back the other way, Matt. On the tee. Jack just getting past the front of the line. We look like at about 24 metres again. Very similar to last end. I think maybe the breeze has just turned around on us. That this end that they're playing at the moment was just against them 15 minutes ago. But the breeze may be just behind them at the moment now. But we promised you a look at the ladder to go through. We have three, uh, two undefeated teams after three rounds. Cabramatta, Bull Ants, yet to lose a rink. They sit on 29.5 points out of a possible 30. Closely followed by St. John's Park on 28. Quite a few teams... Two wins and one loss. Ray Matera sit on 21 points. Marylands and Warilla both on 20. And Engadine and Mount Lewis both on 18 points. With one win out of three games so far, Carlingford on 12 and East Maitland Griffins on 10. And as we mentioned, Belrose yet to register a win. They sit in 10th place on one and a half points. Just in front of Winnie Leagues and Taron Point on a single point from the opening three matches. So big game here. Maryland's in fourth place. Belrose in tenth. Win here for Maryland's. Will consolidate their place in the five. And for Belrose, it's not quite must-win stage. However, getting very close to that. Don't want to go too much further in the year without registering that Master Award win. As Steve Glidden played some telling bowls here early on. Draws another there. Good effort from... Jeremy. So 
been Glidden getting the advantage over Roach there in the second battle at this stage. Heath Lewis is getting the better of Steve Lowe, but it's Glidden just over Roach at the moment. And Dylan just getting the better of Aaron at, at the skips end with those last couple of conversions. So you got all the family down here, mate, having a look and, and yep. playing bowls. Who else is here at the venue today, mate? Uh, Mum and Dad are over there managing the Platinum and then my little brother Tyson doing whatever he's up to, so... Well, we see a big drive from Matt Flapper on the neighbouring rink. Bowls going all over the place. And there's Cody Packer from Maryland scoring two. So that board will narrow up to three shots to six. And we're four all on our other two games. So Bell Rose, three in front on the master board at the moment. set up here. One, two Bell Rose. Maryland's own all the front position. Those bowls coming in on the forehand. And Campton just goes through a couple of metres. A couple of bowls here for Pete to turn up. Gives it a chance. Well, just feathers that ball and goes past. So. First time in a couple of ends that Bill Rose go to the changeover, holding shot. Be Aaron's opportunity to try and convert here. It's been Dylan Fisher the last two ends. One down to one up and one down to three up. Cold draw here on the back end for Dylan. Just over pace. Just heavy and just wide. Sheriff's wider drawing bowls here. He's coming down this ditch side as well. Up in front, he really liked that one too, didn't he, Sam? He followed it for a long way. Yeah. Dylan's quick out of the hand here again. Just misses chipping his own across, so Sheriff with an opportunity here. He can just get past his own, can draw the shot. Also has the opportunity to get a full roll out of that Maroon Bowl. No surprise that he's close. Does he make contact? Played it nicely to give himself a chance. So one further shot to Belrose team. They've now gone from trailing 4-0 to leading 5-4 here on our feature rink. There's plenty of our other platinum competitors tuning in, getting ready for their round four fixtures later on this afternoon. Best wishes to all our sides. It's been fat, fantastic in the buy-in and the promotion of the event. It's going to be a close finish for those top five spots leading into finals weekend. Well, it is those top five. 
after 11 rounds that will make their way to Warilla Bowls and Recreation Club for the first ever Platinum Final Series. Fourth will play fifth in an elimination final. Our top place team will have the first finals match off and it'll be two playing three. Getting that second chance if you make your way into the top three could be crucial. Not to say that fourth or fifth can't win it, but it's a long road. And also, Sam, for the team that finishes on top of the ladder after 11 rounds, $5,000 cash bonus as well. Yeah, right. That's part of the $50,000 prize pool for Platinum. You finish on top after the 11 rounds, five grand into the kitty. Some changing conditions here. Breeze, as we said, not very strong, but just moving directions yeah. end to end almost. We only need about 8 to 10 kilometres an hour, but just proving a difference here. For almost the third end in a row, our teams are playing down Breeze. All right, Glidden holding one with his first there. Two feet off the jack. No improvement with that one. So plenty of room here. And Jeremy Roach. Just needs it to pull up now. Well, that's going to be enough. So a good bowl from Jeremy. Probably hasn't been at his best up to this point. If you can catch up with the action last week, this particular Mary Maryland drink scored an eight in one of their games against the St. John's wow. Park. That's big. Team, so you're not going to see many eights in this event. So no. They just missed out on the master board, though. It was St. John's who came away with a 64 shot to 62 win. This rink of Aaron Sheriff picking up an eight. Creating a bit of history for the Platinum. Bowl sort of blocking things off on either hand here. This Maryland's holding shot. That is the advantage for them at the moment. Gonna have to sort of trust a line somewhere and try and draw it. Bowler Camptons in an awkward spot. Aaron gave Peter the option whether he wanted to come inside or outside that bowl to try and count. And as is often the way, you get it right in the middle. Certainly big venue here, Sam, isn't it? A bit bigger than yeah. some of the clubs we're used to back in the Central West. Yeah. Have you had picked apart the menu, you might? What are you? What was that? Sorry. What are you enjoying on the menu? You might. What's your go-to dish um, here at the club? Haven't really eaten here, but probably just a schnitzel. Not the best end there from our teams, but it is that second bowl of Jeremy Roach. Just in behind the jack, that blue bowl. That he's holding. So, Fisher, his own two bowls coming in here, that, here, those maroon bowls. Does he make contact? Speed's good. I don't think that's quite done enough. 
The sheriff's going to try and find a line here on the back end himself. Just open up a little gap there at the front, that last bowl. So just under speed. I'm not sure you picked that up on our microphones, but indication there. Belrose still one down. So an opportunity to turn bowls up here or lift the shot bowl up a couple of rolls to make a multiple. Well, and that's what he's done. He's lifted it up once. So it'll be at least two. Yeah, to the call. Certainly having a big impact on the game here. He's fish up. Sheriff pulls up with his first. So two bowls removed. That's what it is. Two to Bill Rose. So once again, they extend this out. Seven shots to four here in our feature rink. And once again, Sam, it was Dylan Fisher proving the difference, mate. Yep. Had a quick walk around in the roll-up, just sort of get a bit of a gauge of what bowls people were using. I saw Dylan play two bowls. Yeah. I think they combined to be about three millimetres from the jack between the two of them in the roll-up. Got those XGs working very well. I think you have three ends already. One down to one up, one down to three up, and there, one down to two up. Massive difference in the game. Nine shots just in those three ends. So another end early on, we had a couple of drives. He was four down, got rid of a couple of bowls. To only drop a two. And fair to say, Sheriff just battling with his weight at the moment. Crowd building up here at Club Mary Lands in behind us. Fantastic facility with this outdoor area that we're sort of sitting in rinkside. We had a few people here last night. Sam was there for a Friday night game. Yeah, during the end of the game, there was a few people just building up along the along the side there. They were all here to watch the Grade 3 team or the Platinum, do you think? Oh, probably the Grade 3. They heard about this gun lead from the bush yeah. come down here to play. Yeah, back to what he was doing early on. Good shot from Glidden. Didn't quite get the ideal result. Just gave it a chance. Up and over. Yeah, Roach doing the same there. Just arriving up. Players like you and I, Sam, wouldn't mind just having a full drive at that and yeah. clearing a few out. I think Glidden will be just overweight. He's played those shots well so far. Well, he's just missed the line this occasion. Does it get to a good spot? 
Brings that Mary Lane's ball up, so you'll see the call there from Sheriff. About a metre over himself. They're holding a couple. However, he knows at this level that's not staying as it is, so calling Jeremy to push through these bowls with a metre. Uh, going to be disappointed with that one. They're the one, sometimes you get one chance, Sam, to cover the jack up when it's open like that. Yeah. Really want to nail it. Steve Campton makes them pay. Speed they go for. If it's forehand, it's going to be nice and firm. He's backhand firm. Well, what results are going to come here? Turns a couple out. Still a couple there to the Maryland side. Belrose Bowl was the one that spun right down into the back of the rink. Now Harry, can he change these angles? This makes it slightly, but it won't really get that kill off that blue bowl now. Pushed it past Jack. Be slightly careful here. They don't. What's he trying to play here, Sam? I think he's just playing just over a draw shot. Looks close. Well, does he sit the blue? Well, turned it past their own closest though. Just going to go past there. I see Rather Tom's in a nice little battle there on the yeah. next rink, mate. Leading against Ethan Scott Brannigan. Yeah. Keith might have just gone out of the juniors now. I don't think he'll feature next week at our state championships. Yeah. His brother's still yeah. Riley, but I think Ethan's just gone past that age group now. And when your brother Tom's not far away from been out of yeah. that junior ranks either. August turns 18. Uh, Bell Rose here with the advantage on all three rinks. Ten shot lead on the master board. quite getting the right result with his first. So it'll be Sheriff trying to add to the count. It's really close here. He beat that Maroon Bowl. That will count. And angle's all important here at the moment. There's a very lonely Maroon Bowl there for Bell Rose. See whether Fisher takes the opportunity to play big weight. What are you thinking here, Sam? drawing well so you can either even dead draw it or close seconds really not the worst they're in a position now that they can drop a drop a one yeah, might have been looking up on the back end here maybe a meter or two over was he that was the call from one of his teammates Bowl coming up. Well, he stood up pretty quickly. And I suggest that's underneath. Well, 
I said it's a lonely Bill Rose bowl in there. We have a very tough for Sheriff to try and get to that one. So I just see much of the same, I think, for Aaron. Put you on the spot, Sam. Is he going to draw a counter here or not? Yeah. I'll back him. Backed him in. Nice wide line again. Oh, you caught it in well, Sam, I think. Four, I think, was the call there from Peter Harry. So big change. Haven't scored for quite a few ends there. The magic, but they've made the most of it. Doubled their score every time. Yeah. They have. They went from one to two. Two to four. Two to four. Four, four to eight. eight. Yeah. We mentioned 20 minutes or so ago that this rink did score an eight last weekend. Do you think it's history could repeat itself? Hopefully. It's really the first time in the game that Aaron's impacted the scoreboard. And certainly had the better of him so far. Stretch things right out here. Almost maximum distance. Pretty fair opener there from Heath Lewis. Heath, of course, as we said, now back to back state triples champion. Massive result to go back and defend the title. A couple of different teammates this season with these other members moving clubs. Going back to back. Former Zone 10 Bowler of the Year was Heath in 2019. So won the Marylands Bowler of the Year in that same season. And he'll feature as part of the Zone 10 squad at the upcoming Interzone Championships. You got plans to make that one day, Sam? Hopefully. You've played a few of the junior inner zones yeah. now, haven't you? Yeah. Have your side been named for the junior inner zone as yet? No, I don't think so. My best foot forward for you this coming week and hopefully make that team. Yeah. Quite a few juniors here at Maryland, though, too, isn't there? How many yeah. have you got here at the club now? Um... Not a hundred percent sure, but sport. probably around ten, maybe. Well, just get our fantastic team here. Just to update our scoreboard for us. We're up to eight shots to seven, so we'll get the team to add an extra shot to the Marylands scoreboard. See Matt Flapper continuing a solid start there. Nine shots to three. He leads over Cody Packer. Very close game. Rink number three. Matt Blackburn leading Sean Thompson. Seven, six after six ends played. Bill Rose maintaining that lead. 23 to 17 now on our master board. 21 in, so we're a third of the way through. Let us know in the comments if you're part of the tipping competition, whether you selected Mary Lynn's or Bell Rose this afternoon. Interesting to see what kind of split we've got with our tipsters. It's happening up there at the moment, Sam. Are they still holding a couple, do you think, Mary Lands? Yeah, I think so. Right. 
A bit of room here though for Harry. Just catches one of the front bowls. Just following that same bowl of Harry, so a couple of feet of weight here for Pete. The opportunity for Marylands at the moment. It's not an easy head to play to, so the first one who draws right to this tee is going to have a massive advantage. Bowl that's moved up, so definitely is that second one now. So John Campton very close to sitting this bowl, drops down, it will be shot, and he has done. Skips change over. Belrose holding one. That last bowl of Campton's doing enough for shot. See that nice finish on the bowl too there. All the way back. Love watching some of those replays, Sam. That slow yeah. bowl, the bowls coming in and how they react when they hit another bowl or the jack. Uh, Sheriff, nice and positive weight. Is he wide enough? His line there. Got Not sure Dylan's picked the right line here either. Yeah. Cool. Should be careful with some of these front bowls. Still holding, so it was. The other side now, get that through under it. Oh, Dylan's just fallen right into the line where Aaron wanted to go. Well, that'll work, yeah. He's given the option of playing his backhand here, but really wants to stick to the forehand. Trying to get Dylan's ball through the other one. Oh, that might be just under again. Well, catches some balls at the front, but turns his own up onto the jack. Uh, not quite getting what he wanted, but it's done enough to make shot. Not a lot on offer there for Dylan either. Trying to work in off these wing balls. So if some balls just past the jack. If he can find a way, a jack movement. I think Sammy was looking on his back end there, mate. To yeah. Trying to find the edge of the Aaron Sheriff Bowl. Quite a few metres of weight being played. Wants to miss the front blues and just get the edge of the Sheriff Bowl. Oh, that'll also work. Good shot. Yeah, he's made enough for two. Once again, it's Dylan Fisher proving the difference here on our feature rink. Watch this one again. Catches the blue and runs through himself onto the shot bowl. It's right on the jack for two. A few of you in the comments saying that you've picked Marylands in the tipping. Anyone out there that tip Bell Rose, you'll be quietly confident at the moment. They lead 25 shots to 22 now overall.
shows how even this competition is, Sam, doesn't it? Where you've got a yeah. side like Belrose who haven't won a game yet, but a pushing a powerhouse team like Maryland's on their home turf. Are you involved in the tipping competition? No, no. You can go in it? No. I doubt if you were in it, I'm pretty sure you would have picked Maryland's in this one. Yeah. Being your club. Sheriff just coming back to the rink, just going for a bit of a comfort break. No doubt, just trying to reset. Things haven't quite gone to plan. I'm sure, all our viewers have seen Aaron play a little bit better than what he has done so far. But we're very early stages of this game. Plenty of time for someone like him to turn things around. Steve Glidden, very good one with his first. And he played this one nicely, Steve Glidden. What a solid draw bowler is Glidden. Spend, spend sort of half his year down there at Belrose, and the other half, a place up in Queensland as well, been playing top grade pennant for Broadbeach in the New South Wales off season pretty close to the weight requested there just missed the line we said about having that one opportunity to mix things up make a tough shot here for your opposition this might be the chance here for John Campton just trying to turn that last Glidden Bowl over. Cut down that view of the jack. from Aaron. Two metres of weight. Use the bowl at the front. Just pass. You can trail the jack back to Heath Lewis bowls. Uh, great shot. Peter Harry sits the bowl for one. A similar weighted shot on the other hand now for the Belrose team. Camden a chance to trial the jack back to his own bowl. He has the bowl in the centre of the rink. Oh, Maryland's one, that blue one that came up. Things can change very quickly. It was Belrose holding three. Potentially holding a couple here now. Harry, does he turn his own up again? Well, they're two perfect shots from Peter Harry. And a big high five there from his skip. Bit of a smirk coming past our commentary box. I think Aaron was quite impressed with those two bowls from Peter Harry. Lifts his own bowl there, just past the jack. I think this is going to be firm weight from Fisher. Either the orange or the blue at the front. Clears out a couple of bowls, potentially onto the jack. And he's in the area. Well, Taken one now. Got one out, got access to the jack now as well. Backhand draw. Just going a bit too quick for that line. A 
Maybe he should have had that roll up at the start, seeing what we said. That's big waiting in here from Dylan Fisher. That's a pretty nice release out of the hand. Well, there goes another one. So one to Marylands. Nothing else on but a draw here for Aaron. We expect a pretty big correction here. Just over a metre over with his first. Yeah, well, I haven't seen bowls like that. I've known Aaron for a bit over 25 years. I've never seen him play two bowls that far away. That's very unusual. Right, Dylan Fisher not getting shot there, but reducing the count. He was two down when they crossed over, maybe even three. Got it back to one, so we're nine shots apiece. Ten ends, basically halfway through this game. Very close on the master board as well. Bell Rose, one shot up. Matt Flapper leads Cody Packer, nine seven. That's nine ends played. And it's Sean Thompson now 9-8 in front of Matt Blackburn. After eight ends. See across the green, mate. That grade five team of yours off to a cracking start over there. Yeah, 50 wow. shots to eight on the big wow. board. Be hoping they provide a bit of inspiration to yeah. your teammates here in the Platinum. The key players here for Bell Rose shining at the moment. Steve Glidden in the second spot. Played some crucial ones, but it's been Dylan Fisher yeah. causing all the difference. Been trying to keep a bit of track on how he's going in conversions. I've got him at about plus 11 at the moment for changing shots from when he's gone to the mat compared to when the end's finished. Maybe that sort of level against someone like Sheriff. Shows how good he's been doing it. Pretty good one there from Jeremy. we're tracking today is the proximity of the jack of the Leeds opening bowl. We've seen Heath Lewis plenty of times with touches, especially in the first three or four ends. It's faded away a little bit. So Heath's first bowl, 80 centimetres on average away from the jack. Steve Lowe at 73 centimetres at the moment. I'll keep you updated on that throughout the course of the match. Glidden is drawing up to it, so Bill Rose just holding the advantage there once again. Just be that flat bowl at the back, I think, that holds shot. I'm just short of Jack going into Marylands. Coverage. This is round number four of the Bowls New South Wales Platinum Pennant. Club-based competition. 
each side with access to two marquees if they wish. You see Peter Harry in with a toucher there. His own bowl to come in. A touch on the jacks, enough for one. Similar plan here for Belrose, just on the other side of the green with their own coming up. Uh, the scoring format exactly the same as Bowls New South Wales grade one to seven competition. Uh, Ten points on offer, seven points for winning the master board. And one point for each rink. Do you like that scoring method, Sam? How that works for Pennant? Is that the platinum one over the phone, is it? Or Oh, no, with, just with the scoring, with the 10-point oh, yeah. system. Yeah. Oh, you get that bigger award for winning them overall. But yeah, right. It's a good segue into our live scoring that we're utilising this season in Platinum. So if you see our seconds grabbing for the phone in their pocket, they're not sending a message to their loved ones. They are doing the live scoring, which means you can keep track of every game end by end throughout the course of all 11 rounds as well as the finals. So great initiative. We've taken the lead from some of the other states who have had that system in for a couple of seasons now. Is Maryland still holding? The sheriff with his first down here on the back end. And draw right around these bowls. It's just out of the count. No more than half a metre past. A look at some of our live scoring. I can let you know it's Mount Lewis currently leading East Maitland 13 shots to five in that fixture. That's taking place at Mount Lewis. All other games will be played in round four later on this afternoon and into the evening. Oh, big effort there from Dylan. Nearly turned his own up. I'm sure Aaron's pushed this one all the way. A bit less pace there on that one. He just become a bit of an awkward sight for Fisher, though. The breeze just picks up a bit, Sam. Just blow, <laughs> blow a bit of our paperwork away here. Very still when we arrived just before the game, wasn't it, mate? Yeah. Walked a long way up the green there. Just have a bit of a look at some of these angles. Yeah, play nice and firm. Oh, I missed that last bowl of Sheriff's. Well, he gets an edge off the side and we're out of bounds. So we'll replay in number 11. Not sure that was the exact angle he was looking for, but he'll take the result. So we remain nine apiece here. Further shot there to Matt Flapper on our rink next door. So, as you'll see, he's out now to 10 7. 
Master board awfully close. Bell Rose, narrow advantage, 27 25. 21 ends to be played on each rink, 63 ends overall. So you'll see we're just a little bit under halfway through. What is your next panic game at Sam? Um, I think it's here, I believe. Next week. You have a few games next week, haven't you, in the pennant? Yeah. Well, you were telling me earlier, was it a triple header coming up? Yeah. Is that a bit of a catch-up from some washed-out yeah, games? Sunday game against Castlefield was just the last week's game, so... Things turning around in this lead battle as well. As Jeremy Roach draws a touch of his best bowl of the game so far on this replay at end number 11. A big conversion over on the far rink as well. It was four shots to Sean Thompson. Might have been one down, Sam, and moved the shot bowl out for yeah. four. Reminder, each side allowed two marquees. They can be New South Wales based or non-New South Wales. For Bell Rose, it's two of their skips in Dylan Fisher here on our covered streaming rink and on the neighbouring rink, Matt Flapper. Both those gentlemen from Victoria. For Marylands, they've picked up a couple of Queenslanders. Nathan Rice playing third on the neighbouring rink and, of course, Aaron Sheriff here on our streaming rink. All those other scores, check out the Bowls Link results portal. Great site. You can see all the games. It also gets you up to date with any scores that are there from Bowls Australia events or any other state organisation. So you want to go to the Bowls Link results portal, search up Bowls New South Wales, and then obviously you're looking for Platinum Pennant. One other round four match already underway over at Mount Lewis. As they take on the East Maitland Griffins. A uh, super shot there. Yeah, that's just about perfect from Pete Harry. He's trying hard here. Not quite going to be. It is still two to Marylands. Pretty good close bowl in there, though, for Belrose. Pretty happy with that first time. Up a bit short there, but you'll see right on line. So, change of plans. Just trying to lift the shot ball up and over on the back end now. As we see a lead change on the master board, Marylands work their way in front with that big count from Thompson. 
Flick off the front, move some of those shot balls there from Campton. Still two to Marylands. Really opened up access to the shot balls on the jack with that result that he got. Sheriff's not counting. Does mix up a couple of Belrose bowls just past the jack on that side. And we'll see what Dylan decides, whether it's a firm weight or just arriving. And he's picked the just arriving on the back end. Just hoping to bend back for the right angle here. Gets the outside one first, onto the back one, and that's going to be enough for shot. Putting on a clinic here, Dylan Fisher. If you haven't seen Dylan play before. He's a current Victorian state skipper. Very well credentialed, played some underage games for Australia as well. Currently playing at the Mooney Valley Club. Down in Victoria. And looking for a bit of revenge from Sheriff. Aaron beat Dylan in the 2022 Australian Indoor Singles Final. So he got that little bit of a result on the last end, the very last bowl to get the jack out of bounds. And on the replayed end, he's converted once again, two down to one up. One shot there to Bill Rose. This rink continues to be close. As Marylands leading 4-0 in the early stages. Bill Rose quickly got that back to 4-all. And further went in front 7-4. Counter 4 from Marylands. Got them back in front ever since then. They're just trading blows. Ten shots to nine to the away side at the moment. After 11 ends, exactly the same score next door with Belrose 10 9 in front after 11. And the Sean Thompson rink 13 8 in front after nine ends. For Marylands on rink number three. Liking what I'm seeing so far from Bill Rose. Plenty of chat amongst their group, Sam, as well, isn't there? Yeah. A couple of the Marylands guys trying to inspire their team, but... You're in for a very close finish here. Just pulls up in front of the ditch, so one there that could be in the game later on. For the first time today, Glidden just a little short on that backhand in this direction. Good shot, 
That ball of Jeremy's done enough to turn in for short. Be some of our other juniors on, hopefully watching Sam, that wouldn't have seen yeah. you this quiet for a long time, yeah, mate. Probably. Back again, similar line just over, finishing a good spot. Two good ones there from Jeremy Roach. You see Bill Rose here at the moment with the four shortest bowls on the rink. The thirds make their way back to play their bowls. Hampton faced a similar situation in this direction a couple of ends ago and drew shot with his last bowl. Well, once again, just in front of the jack, so it's five out of five, pulling up short for the Bill Rose team. Pete mixing up with those bowls there as well. Uh, Campton, how's he corrected here? Just outside, perfect line. Another one just short, so Marylands with an opportunity here. Can set things up really well for Sheriff by drawing another counter. Just needs to run this out on a really good line. Turns that bowl in. So it's like at least two to the Marylands team. Skips cross over, but being down hasn't meant anything in the past for Dylan. Been very good so far today. Some big noise on rink number three. It's a counter four to Belrose. That was Thompson getting a four last end. Blackburn fires right back. Things tighten up again on our master board. There's Dylan Fisher. Trying to sit to that shot blue bowl. Well, he has once again. Some kind of performance so far from Fisher. It's going to be really close for shot there at the moment. Aaron trying to find his line up here on the draw. This runs all the way. It's really good. I just didn't want that touch. Tough to tell. Certainly looks on screen that it was the last ball of Dylan's that was the shot, Sam. Did you get a good look at that? I think they did say Maryland still has it. Okay. So we're thinking Dylan potentially one down at the moment. So he's still got his own balls to work up. It'd be best if he just draws around. Now, oh, Dylan Fisher, this is an exhibition. Well, no doubt about who shot now. Just trying to get a bit of view from our commentary position here. There's not a lot of great angles at the front. 
We mentioned earlier that it was all Bell Row short of the jack. Sheriff does have the three deepest bowls on the rink. If he can find a way to get something through the jack at the front. Even working off his own last bowl. All about connections out on that wider line. Doesn't quite get it right. So we know it's at least one to Bell Rose. Set on screen, it looked like a second one, but live we thought the players had suggested it was Maryland still holding. So they've got the lie detector out anyway. Two to Belrose, I think. It Looks was. like two, yeah. yeah. All right, what a performance, Dylan Fisher, once again. Goes to the head a couple down and makes two. I said we're keeping track of the numbers. He's up to about plus 19 on my count at the moment. With his turnover from when he steps onto the mat to when the ends are finished. Twelve completed ends. There's six or seven that I can recall straight away where he's been down and made shots. Looking back through one of our questions that came through earlier. Yes, Cody Packer has now moved over here to Club Marylands, working as part of the bowls department here at the venue. So, New South Wales player. And I might have saw during the week he's been named in the Zone 10 squad for the inner zone. So, Cody be looking to press his claims as part of the... New South Wales Kino Blues. They embark on test series coming up against both Queensland and Victoria and also the Nationals. Recently announced to be up at the Gold Coast at Club Tweed. Interesting to see how selection goes. You wouldn't want to be a New South Wales selector at the moment. Yeah. They, our men's side won 20 out of 21 rinks at the Nationals. And then you've got someone like Cody as part of the Jackaroo squad coming into the state. Yeah. Don't envy that job at all. You see on our scoreboards on the screen, three very close matches going on. Dylan Fisher here, 12-9 in front of Aaron Sheriff. Next door, Cody Packer has now taken the advantage, 11-10 over Matt Flapper. And as we've told you over the last 15 minutes or so, two counts of four, one in either direction. Is Sean Thompson, 13-12 over Matt Blackburn. At the top of the screen, that equates to Belrose, 34-33 in front. 34 ends played. John Campton right up for shot. Potentially two there for Bill Rose. Yeah, 
Harry pulling up short with his first, so Rowdy with an opportunity. Draw right up to the jack. Toucher was the call from his skip. That's super weight for it. That's going to be enough to count. Correction needed here from Peter Harry. Just needs to hold on. Just pass that ball of Heath Lewis. Well, that could be enough. Touch. Sometimes we need that little bit of luck. Yeah. See what our player of the match so far can do here. So here Dylan's got a couple of balls just past the jack. Make slight contact on Peter Harry's last. Well, he's not far away. Does he get the jack back? Well, he's done enough for his own bowl to work its way around the front. Halves the shot bowl. Drops around for shot to Dylan. So Aaron will be trying to sit that ball through. Close here. Well, just sort of sums up the way these gents have been playing so far. Dylan playing very well. Just gets the shot ball nicely and drops around himself. Aaron has not quite found it so far today. Gets the ball and drops away. So those two maroon bowls just past the jack there. Belonging to Belrose. Dylan will be hoping for a touch of the jack. About half a metre. Big score over there on Sean Thompson's rink, I think. Picked up a five. Pretty sure. Yeah, you're right. So the big scoring continues so it was four to Thompson followed by four to Blackburn and then they hit back with a five so Maryland's back in in front Aaron Sheriff just looking at the angles here whether he gets his own bowl does that shot bowl pass the jack or not Aaron will be conscious not to play soft weight and have the jack only go half a metre or so to those Maroons so We'll see more rather than less. Oh, he's checked out the angles. What result does he get? Gets the ball through. Runs onto the jack himself. Well, Heath Lewis down in the corner. How many is it? It is two. Aaron's bowls run through. So. Right. A couple of big bowls around the rink here. Sense a bit of a push from Marylands. As you mentioned, Sam. A couple of shots. There for Aaron, five for Thompson. Conversion by Cody Packer on the middle rink just played as well. Right, critical time here. In the game, Maryland's trying to surge their way forward. More people join our telecast. Just a reminder about the other round four fixtures. 6 p.m. tonight, Engadine take on St. John's Park. At 5 p.m., it's Cabramatta up against Tarrant Point. 4.30, Warilla hosting Wente Leagues. At 4 p.m., it's Carlingford up against Raymond Terrace. And right now, as we speak, underway at 1.30... Mount Lewis taking on East Maitland. Bring him 
Uh, good bowls there from Heath. Classic leading one on one behind. In that other game in progress over at Mount Lewis. Could let you know there's 21 ends being played and it's Mount Lewis 21 leading East Maitland 20. Very close over there at the moment. Just a reminder you can get those scores while they're on the Bowls Link results portal or by downloading the Bowls Now app. Healthy. Look up Bowls New South Wales and the Platinum Pennant competition. You can go through any match you yeah, wish. Up. Rink by rink. Good shot by yeah. Steve Glidden. May still be one to Marylands, but set it up very well. So in that fixture over at Mount Lewis, Nathan Wise 6, trailing Josh Walker-Davis 9. It's Brett Spur 6, leading Hayden Boykowski 5. And Scott Tholburn, nine, leading Jake Rin, six. And here, as you can see on our big board, we mentioned that push from Marylands. Starting to take that bit of a lead. Oh. Two good shots by Steve Glidden. Just a little bit unlucky that didn't quite get the jack past those bowls. How's your brother been playing on the next rink, mate? Have you been keeping an eye on him? Yeah, it looks like he's going pretty good. Had a little bit of a rough start, but he's picking back up now. Have you played many games against Tom? No, not really. I mean, most of them um, just been in juniors, really, and yeah. You beat him a few times? Um, last year and the year before, I played him in the quarter final and final, the Zone 4 junior singles, and he beat me both of them, so I haven't beat him in a singles game yet, other than a roll up. Just trying to be over the draw here, the Belrose team. Just trying to spill the jack out. Harry, two pretty good bowls. Well, those situations here, it's not easy for Bel Ro Belrose to get shot. It's also difficult for Marylands to add many more. It's just going to turn into the front bowls. So. Sheriff straight into the jack, holding one. Your brother trying to get the good books there. Walked over and picked up Aaron's bowl for him. Yeah. Right, backhand draw here. Sheriff, nice high line. Well, well, does get a touch, but he's probably just opened up a bit of an angle there for Dylan to be able to get the jack through.
Just looking at the bowls at the back of the rink. It's like we've got the drinks waiter coming to look after us, mate. Also known as Dad. Yep. He must have got shy. He was going to come and join us in the commentary box. Yeah, he said he was going to. But... Uh, Dylan, does he get down to the jack? Well, he oh. does. Bounces around. Very stiff. Good uh, that's, that's... Looks like Jeremy's bowl yeah. at the back, isn't it? The blue. A couple of very similar coloured blue bowls yeah. at the back of the rink here. Oh, you see that jack moving around. Uh, Sheriff, as you wait here, Aaron. Hey, coming. Come on. I'm sure that's in the count. Uh, we'll have a look here. That bowl of Dylan Fishers was a toucher, the one that's in the ditch. If that one is second, you may see him just drive for the shot bowl. If his bowl's not second, it will be a draw about a metre past Aaron's will be the aim. Aaron Sheriff's bowl finishing almost exactly level with the tee. Well, it is a run for the shot bowl by looks of this. Nice confident draw, bowl or jack. Trying to get past Aaron's. Oh, no, he's missed the weight altogether. So we're going to be measuring from the ditch again out onto the green. Really surprised with that sound. I thought he wanted to play. Yeah. Well, he's confident of that. Yeah. I just suggest if he was drawing it that he's more down. Oh, I saw an orange bowl get moved out there. Whether that was in the count or whether they were just moving it out of the way. Suggest that orange one's in the count. So two have been removed. I'm going to check Aaron's front one. Well, this could be a big... If Aaron's front one counts, it's a big score. Mm -hmm. Indication after Dylan's drive was that they were only one down. Yep. Yep. Right, some misinformation given there to the players. Well, it's going to be two. Another end ticked over there for Marylands. We might have a change of personnel coming in the commentary box. Thanks very much, All Sam, right. for Thanks, joining Lee. us this afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you down at Wheeler next week for the State Junior Championships. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Wish you all the best. One rich jumps out, another pops in, and we have Anthony joining us. Hi, welcome, Anthony. Yeah, good day, Lee. How are you, mate? Going well. Just mentioned over the last two or three ends that Maryland's just pushing hard here at the moment across the rinks. A couple of big counts to Sean Thompson's side. But I'm 45 36 now on the big board. Yeah, they've um, definitely increased the, uh, the scoring, that's for sure. You'd be pleased to know, mate. Sam didn't embarrass himself at all. Uh, no, he's pretty laid back, Sam. Not much worries him. Very quiet. I haven't seen him that quiet. He's never that quiet in any of our junior camps. Yeah, yeah he's a bit worried. Um, Gavin actually asked him during the week if he'd put his hand up and, and have a turn commentate, and he wasn't too keen, but, yeah, you talked him into it, so... I think Gavin Holburn as well. Did he schedule his, his own pennant match on purpose at the same time as this so he got out of it? <laughs> I think so, mate. Yeah. 
No, Gav's been good with um, with Tom and Sam. Actually, all the, all the kids here at Marylands, he's, uh, he's been really good. Yeah, same to Sam during the coverage earlier. There's plenty of juniors here at Marylands at the moment. A nice group, boys and girls as well. Yeah, it's good, yeah. Got quite a few down there next week at Warilla, so... They're really looking forward to that week. It'll be a, a huge event for our team. See 100 kids down there for the junior championships next week. New format with the open entry. So change the format to get some more people there. And they've certainly responded. Yeah, it's good to see the kids getting involved and, you know, putting their hand up and, yeah, having a crack at that sort of thing, like playing the better, you know the better quality bowlers and yeah, it'd be good to see. This gives more people an opportunity from all the areas of the state too. And we look at our TV rink here and I look at someone like Aaron Sheriff who came through the New South Wales junior system. If you were a Central Coast bowler at that time, I think Aaron might have won seven or eight zone junior yeah. singles in a row. So you didn't beat Aaron there. You didn't get the chance to come down to the state championships and put yourself in front of the selectors. So that opportunity is now available. Yeah, that's the thing too, I guess. Um, having that many kids there, it gives gives the selectors a good look at uh, you know, a lot more kids. And... I think the other thing as well is, especially for the females... Over the last few years, we haven't had too many females make their way through to state finals. So for those selectors to be able to see some more of the girls in action. We're going to pick eight boys and eight girls for a, a junior series against Queensland and Victoria. That side will be selected not too long after the junior championships, I believe. That gives them a chance to see some of those girls, especially playing in those back-end positions. They may not have had that opportunity to before. Yeah, Pete Harry is he's, uh, played real good bowls all weekend. Pulled up a little bit short there, but uh, he's probably been the best out of the Maryland side to date. I don't know what it's been like watching from the sideline, but over here, I think Dylan Fisher causing all sorts of damage to this rink. Been deadly with some of his conversions. Yeah, he's sort of been the difference really on that rink, hasn't he? Lurchie's been playing really well on Cody's rink. Um, what about that guy, Tom Rich? How's he been going? Oh, he was uh, pretty ordinary early, actually, but he's he's uh, <laughs> he's um, definitely uh, yeah improved. No, he's he's uh, yeah going well at the moment. Pete Harry with another goodie. Beats his first. Big thumbs up from the skip. I see John Campton there with a vintage Belrose hat on. That one's been around a while, that one, I think. He's close too, isn't he? Just anything but the gap now. Well, Ben's onto the jack. And sort of 50 50 out on the side with who's got it down there. Maroon Bowl is Bell Rose, that aqua coloured bowl belonging to Marylands. Call it one to Marylands, just off where that's finished at the moment, but awfully close. Any Marylands supporters watching on, you'd be pleased to know your grade five side is putting in. Fantastic performance. They lead 74 shots to 16 against Carlo. I will say one of the rinks for Carlingford, apparently there was a medical episode uh, with one of their fellas. So one rink is actually playing one short. Okay. So that was, a, yeah, sort of yeah, later this morning when they couldn't find a replacement. So yeah, you never like to see those sort of things happen any side. It's the beauty of the rules at the moment in a in a sides match, you, you can play with three players. Six bowls against eight, just miss out on that second. Obviously going to be up against it, missing a yeah. couple of bowls, but at least you're still out on the rink and you don't have to forfeit the game if you do have 
that sort of incident occur where you we are a man down. Good wait there, Aaron with his first and Dylan looking for a result there. Well, just need to get past to chip that ball out. Most certainly can say that Maryland's a holding as Sheriff changes hands. There's a bit of a gap down through the tee. Maybe just underneath the line here. Does he get past the front? Oh, he does get past. Just shy. Good effort there by Omar. One or two seconds, though, for Belrose. Probably two. I think you say he's bowls a toucher, is it, or? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that shot one is. Certainly on a wider line here. Just going to miss his own as well. So that'd be, I believe, one to Marylands. For the first time in a while, I see Dylan not quite getting that conversion shot. Shot or second? Not giving up, no. yeah. One to Mary Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you playing in the pennant, right? Is she uh, playing in the threes, mate. Actually, yeah, lucky enough to um, to skip a side, so I wasn't expecting that being the first year down here, but yeah, that's um, was yeah. that part of the contracts, mate? You said I, I've got oh, to skip yeah. if I'm coming here. <laughs> no, no, mate, I would have been happy to yeah, manage the whatever grade or yeah just lucky enough to get a run so yeah i'm quite happy it's uh, it's good great club and yeah we've all been welcomed here it's been awesome <laughs> oh, we're talking about that with sam earlier on are you still making the commitment to drive it must be about five hours each way is it oh uh, about three three oh, and three. a half oh, a bit, yeah. bit less okay yeah, three and a half yeah it's not too, not too bad you got one of those jets so, have you, you yeah. Pilot Melissa, yeah, she's good. She's good. Well, he's with a pretty good opener there, just over a foot away from the Jack. Lowy, just missing on the line and wait. Even anything, Belrose just. Probably pulling up a bit short every time the Jack's been at the tee in this direction. So the breeze just swirling around a little bit today. A bit big there, Heathy. See so Heath Lewis just trying to trail the Jack into the ditch with his second one there. <laughs> he's pretty harsh on himself, Heath, if uh, he's not thereabouts. Oh, he's super lead. He mentioned earlier, he's the back-to-back -back New South Wales State Triples champion. Winning the title with, with your son, Tom, and Jack McShane a couple of yeah. weeks ago out in Dubbo. I'm yeah. not sure who he beat the year before, but... <laughs> was an, uh, yeah, it was an awesome game, that against Tarrant Point. It's a cracker, wasn't it? I think it was only a uh -huh. shot, in it? Yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, 2021, I think it finished up. 2019, something like that. It was, yeah. Massive crowd there, too. It was, it was a great afternoon. That was yeah, very... You know, just a circumstance of the weather and the pairs getting delayed in their first session. Uh, huge crowds there to watch the, all those finals that, that took place. Lucky enough, just with the pace of the game, we're able to get our cameras across to cover the last four or five ends of that men's triples final. Jack McShane played some absolute bombs in the last third of that game. He did. Hold on. Hold on. Four feet. The semi final, like David Axon, like didn't miss a shot. Like he was unbelievable that semi final, and yeah, I thought the boys would have, you know, they were really going to be up against it, and yeah. He missed a couple and it, uh, yeah, he went the boys' way. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. 
<laughs> Once again, the front end from Mary Leanne's getting the advantage, as we said, in this direction especially. Still a relatively close fixture, but it is Mary Leanne's leading on all three rinks. Point scoring system, one point for each rink one and seven for the master board. So if things were to finish as they are, it would be a 10-0 victory for Marylands. So they'd be very happy with, obviously, but probably doesn't quite do Belrose justice at the moment. They've put in a good fight. That is just three, two, and two, the difference on those rinks. They can easily turn any or all of those three around over the concluding ends. Yeah, what have we got, 20... 20 ends to go on the big board, so. 20 of bowls left in this, that's for sure. Well, Aaron's saying there that Maryland's are holding two, so that must be Roachie's bowl just behind Jack. Yeah, it there. certainly is, yeah. Absolutely. Those two just passed the Jack. We see another dead end on rink number three. That's definitely going to be the last to finish. They're already two or three ends behind our others. One other game going on at the moment. Mount Lewis and East Maitland. It's a Mount Lewis home game. It's currently 26 apiece. There's 28 ends being played there. There's Rowdy. It's awfully close to drawing this. Shot. Oh, they're the killers. I was an opposition player when you, the other guys up front have sort of sprayed them around a bit and you get one bowl like that right in front of the jack. Once again, this Tom Rich, he knows how to get the good books over there picking up Aaron's bowl for him. Uh -huh. <laughs> you taught him well, mate. Yeah, oh, I might have been them days, you know, playing in zone four against you, mate, all the time. Yeah, you might have learned a bit off you. <laughs> if you're not the best player, just do the team thing as well. <laughs> Try and get picked that way. Yeah. That's been my philosophy. Yeah. All jokes aside, be the good team person. Those little things make a difference. It all 12 people. All shoulders to the wheel. I try and get the result. Sometimes if it's not your day on the green, set this before in coverage. Be that best team person. Be the loudest. Be the person picking up the bowls. Be the one to just go and get someone else a drink. So many things you can do to contribute. Well, just a bit short there. He wasn't happy with that. And fair to say he hasn't found it so far. 16 ends here at the moment. Five ends to go. See the shadow just starting to come across from the clubhouse. Almost onto the edge of the rink at the moment. We'll see how far that comes across over the next hour or so while this game finishes. I just wonder if Dylan's looking to play a really adventurous shot for I'll take a couple of couple out yeah, the Heath Lewis second shot through to those back blue bowls of Jeremy Roach most of the draw lines are blocked up is what he'd be looking at if he did get all three of those bowls probably lies four or five however we're in one in a hundred kind of territory to get this right he does happen to get a sheriff bowl through his own a shot bowl. Not a good result. Cody's rink just picked up another one, maybe. I think that's right. 48-40 yeah. now on the big board. Dylan playing weight here, holding one, 
Trying to get a few bowls out here. Oh, got the one he wanted. Didn't quite get the blue bowls behind it, though. One. Super attempt. As we said, if he got two or three bowls out there, it was four or five shots. Just about a quarter of a bowl out getting that result. What's next for you, Richie? What have you got coming up, mate? Uh, well, obviously down at, uh, well, we'll be at Engadine tomorrow with Tom. As Marylands uh, play them tomorrow morning, then we'll head um, head down to Warilla uh, for the boys with the state juniors. And then, yeah, back up here Friday. Uh, yeah, Sam and myself have got triple header next weekend for the threes. Friday night here, and then I think it's Saturday at Northmead and Sunday at Castle Hill. Tommy's actually up the highway to uh, East Maitland on Saturday and... Raymond Terrace Sunday, I think. So, geez, I'm glad I'm not managing yeah. your diary. <laughs> oh, that's a full week. <laughs> yeah, we've got a bit on, but uh, it's all good. And then um, Jay's playing down here as well, so he's playing in the twos. He's uh, he might be here actually next weekend, I think. So yeah, it's all happening, mate. There, yeah, always something going on. If it's not work, we're down here. Uh, it's good, mate. Obviously, it's a huge commitment to get uh, to get the boys down here. Uh, already proven with Tom making his way through to a state final and winning it. That makes a big difference being down in these the big clubs. I had a quick chat with Tom before the game. Just said that obviously he'd won a few zone titles out there in zone four yeah. and, and playing a bit with with Jay in, in some of those. But I think that difference is. I think everyone's just playing one position too high out in some of those yeah. regional areas. So yeah. if you have the opportunity to come down and play leading a good side instead yeah. of playing second for Jay yeah. back home. So I think it just makes that difference, that one position where you can throw in a really good skip. Someone like Jack, who's won yeah. a few state titles already. Just yeah, makes that's a difference. Right. Like, and it's, yeah. like I say, it's sort of proven the move, you know, like it's, it's been worth it. Um, and... Um, just, yeah, it was sort of, well, sort of the offer was there, uh, made to him from Gavin Holburn, like, because Tom had had a lot to do with him, CHS and that type of thing, and um, actually Matty Searle, uh, before he passed away, had a lot to do with Mudgee, and, um, yeah, was always talking to Tom. Tom and Matty were pretty close about um, Mary Lands and what a great club it was and that sort of thing, so nice. Tom's always been interested in coming down here. Speaking of great, what a fantastic shot by Jeremy Roach. He's actually another Raiders supporter too, mate. There's not too many of us about. So. Is that right? Yeah. Well, hasn't yeah. he just gone up in my <laughs> books? Remember the name, folks. Jeremy Roach. He's going places. Very passionate about the green machine. Uh, Glidden not with shot, but just opening up the front. digress slightly, but the Raiders have had a good start of the year, Richie, haven't they? Yeah. Up yeah. and about early. Not too bad. Uh, very good from Jeremy there. Yeah, I went into the season with not probably too high hopes on the Raiders. But no, I wasn't overconfident, but uh, no, they've done well. We're probably only an injury or two away from things going bad, especially in the halves, but We'll take it while while it's there. We'll see we've lost a couple of our big names for extended period this week. Yeah. Oh, good to see some of these younger fellas getting a go though, like see how they go. And sorry ladies and gentlemen, but that wraps up our sixty seconds of Canberra Raiders coverage that you'll get every <laughs> single time that I'm on commentary. Uh, back to the bowls. Rowdy just trying to push these up. Well, he wanted the other blue. <coughs> uh, 
One shot there at the moment to Mary Leanne's. Another catcher passed. Call from Dylan was just a little bit more weight. Trying to get the blue onto the blue. the line here. Aaron just calling for Pete just to build up that back of the rink again. Just beating his last. He's certainly going to get past. Just wants a clear run now. Probably just over where he really wanted, but it just builds up that, that back of the rink. So 48 41, Mary Land's in front. Two of our other rinks very close to a conclusion on this end. So these three rinks in play here at the moment. Plenty of things can happen. It's Bill Rose just holding one on our middle rink with one bowl to go. Might be Mary Land's one on the Thompson rink there with only a bowl or two to go as well. First of our three rinks completed there. Thompson scoring one. Is, well, Dylan doesn't get shot, but he does leave his bowl at the back. Not sure the angles are great here for Dylan. Not sure if, even if he wasn't trying to come off that widest blue bowl. Aaron once again to the back of the rink. Dylan is looking at this wide blue bowl to try and create the angle to get back to the other one. Well, that's where he's after, I'm sure, but he's close to it as well. Oh. Well, got a result. Blue on the blue. Onto the jack. Goes out of the side of the green. It was after the inside of the bowl, really. Gets the outside. Does lie three or four shots there. But the kind of one that you'd expect Aaron Sheriff to be drawing. You've got a metre of room. We should know early on whether he's close. Oh. Oh, this is underweight. That's How much underweight? Man. Big bowl here, Sheriff. Doesn't want it to drop down. Well, it has. No, it's going to hang on. There's a lot in the mix here. This is a three or four bowl check. One. I believe Aaron just stayed up like that. Yeah. Well, guys have had a good look around, and it is one to Bell Rose. 14 all, 17. Uh, not exactly what Aaron wanted, but we did cut a couple out, though. Once again, it's another conversion from Dylan Fisher. Just gusting up. Normally at the strongest that it's been all afternoon. 3.30 local time. Once again, we see Bell Rose just pulling up short. Steve Lowe going away from the other green, back towards the road. Uh, Heath just gone a bit past there. It's... Yeah. Bit of breeze might have tricked them a bit.
Uh, been keeping track of our leads and their proximity to the jack with their opening bowl. So Heath Lewis averaging about 75 centimetres per bowl. Steve Lowe at 88. Both probably a little bit underneath what they would have liked, their performance at this stage. When it gets down to these nine ends, all square on your ring five on the big board. I think one or two bowls from here could prove the difference. Steve Glidden early on in the game, playing a few good draw shots and soft weight conversions. Probably just gone off a little bit in this second half. It certainly have been a little bit tighter on the other two rinks at the moment, Richie, haven't they, compared to our, yeah. our feature rink at the moment. That, um, that shade coming across yeah, on that forehand side, heading away. You hard to tell quite how much difference that's making, but it's certainly in your eye line anyway. Well yeah, Roachie's drawn one there. Yeah, he played a few good ones over the last five or six ends. Nathan Rice on the next ring. Almost a front toucher there as well. So Melrose have narrowed this margin back to five. Looks like Maryland's holding on all rinks at the moment, so... Trying to get that back out towards double figures again. Certainly not performing very well in this direction, the Bell Rose 4. Getting out of trouble with one bowl often on this direction. A lot of it being Dylan's last one too, actually. Yeah, Absolutely. Harry just missing right on line. About a metre and a half pass. So he two metres heavy with his first. Certainly on a better line. Does he get past the front? Not quite. So. Good shot. Frustration there, I think, in Harris call. Just saying, mm. looks like plenty of room from my end. Just draw me a shot, please. It's going to catch the front as well, just under weight. Uh, Maryland's crossover with the shot. Plenty of room there, though. For... Oh, isn't there what? Yeah. Thompson driving over on rink number three, so things must have changed over there. things are going we might be getting over to that far rink towards the end of the game Dylan just under a metre pass so still one to Mary Lands Aaron Sheriff on his forehand with the revolutions this will turn back a long way well, that's going to be enough to count Not the best delivery. You might have just caught the foot mm. on the way through there. Not happy with that one at all. <laughs> Got a feeling he hit the ankle. Maybe he's trying to block Aaron's draw line here. Mm. Uh, Sheriff trying to add to the count. Just under the line of his first. What's it running? Only two. Both skips disappointed with their last. Oh, it is Maryland's just turning that board over. 
Currently leading on all three rinks. Not much in it, though. Nathan, Nathan holding shot on Cody's rink with his last bowl coming now. Yeah, one bowl to go there. A couple of bowls to go on that Thompson Blackburn rink. So it's going to be one to Marylands on the middle rink. So they'll go out to 16 14 there now. Saw a similar game last night. I was at Warello when they took on the Engadine Cougars. Very similar situation to this where Rilla was sort of just sneaking in front on all rinks. But with a few ends to go, Engadine could have won the game or Rilla could have got 10 0. For the Rilla supporters, they just got the better of the last couple of ends to get that 10 0 result. I was really impressed with what I saw from Engadine. They're certainly one to watch in this competition. Two wins last weekend. And push Rilla right to the brink on the indoor facility last night. Angadine in action later on. They take on St. John's Park. And as you said, Richie, they play Marylands tomorrow morning tomorrow. over at Angadine. So 10 o'clock, I think it is, tomorrow morning. Yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock. Looms is a cracking game. Could be a, a few here for Belrose on Tomo's rink, I think. Three. It's three, so that rink narrows down. and Going back and forward here all the way to the end. Back Might get us back shots. to four, I think. Is it on the big board? Have a look there. It's Thompson now, 2019. Cody Packer, 15 14, Aaron Sheriff 16 14, or potentially Cody's got one more to go on there that hasn't been added. Question there from David Baker about other live streaming. Uh, David, I'm not 100% sure there's no streaming for uh, Bowls New South Wales because we're here at Marylands this afternoon. Uh, potentially maybe some of those individual clubs are streaming fixtures later on today. So keep an eye out on some of their pages. You may get some information about any of those other live stream that matches. Just to recap those other games. 4pm, still a little under half an hour away over at Carlingford, just down the road from where we are at the moment. Carlingford will take on Raymond Terrace. 4.30 down in the Illawarra. It's Warilla at home to Winnie Leagues. 5 p.m. Cabramatta take on Tarrant Point. And as we just mentioned, Engadine at 6 o'clock. They're at home to St. John's Park. Just trying to get you an up-to-date score also from the game between Mount Lewis and East Maitland. I can't quite see what's happening at the moment. Richie, have you got an idea on the um, Roachie's Bowl just in front? No, I think that's the Belrose Bowl. It's a Belrose, yeah, okay. I think they're holding the one, yeah. Heath but probably second shot just behind. Very similar, these two bowls. So Mount Lewis and East Maitland, 34 ends played. It's Mount Lewis 34, leading East Maitland 30. Very little in that fixture as well. That's at Mount Lewis, is it? Is a yeah. Mount Lewis home game. You in the tipping competition, mate? Yeah, mate, yeah. Picked around like I think ninety nine percent of the of the tips that did last night, but I missed, yeah, I certainly missed one game. I had Taron Point bouncing back at home. John Camden right around the front bowl to protect this. That counts for two. I sort of sit a little bit jack eye there, so call ditch weight. Try and get both bowls or off that last one onto the jack. Oh, bit 
of a grunt from Harry. Must be just getting under. Any results to follow? No, it gets the gap. Probably don't have to ask, but I better double check. Why do you tip Maryland's here, I assume? I did, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have much choice, otherwise, Tom, yeah. It's pretty much uh, automatic selection. So if you haven't done so already, the tipping for each game will shut off 10 minutes prior to that match. So as we said here in round four, there's two matches already underway, but if you had forgotten to put in your tips, there is still time to go and put those tips in for the other four fixtures. And then, of course, don't forget to do round five tomorrow. Once again, all 12 teams in action tomorrow morning. So those games will start from 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. I see Aaron trying to get both bowls. Just a couple of bowls wide of the ideal result. Let's get a Belrose bowl back into the ditch. A big one coming up for Aaron with his last. He's going to be two or three down. Dylan close again, isn't he? Or just fast? Well, that's going to be fourth shot. Aaron doesn't want to get this wide green one straight through the orange. That's what he's looking at. He's assessed the danger, jumps onto the mat, does back off the weight a little bit. Well, he's following this intently. This must be close, folks. Gets bowl on a jack, makes a couple. What a fantastic conversion by Aaron Sheriff. Just awesome weight there. He said, I think he just assessed the danger. He knew getting that wing green ball through his own was not a great result. Just seeing whether Dylan can turn over and trail this jack on the back end. Not sure if that's Roachie's bowl back there on the ditch or. Okay, forehand weight. Start to see these angles through the front bowls. Well, he's found a way to get it out. We saw a fantastic conversion from Sheriff. And once again, Dylan gets the jack off the rink. Just our second dead end here. action on the rink next door. Big chat between the Marylands team. Cody Packer to play. Look, it's Marylands holding, but they've got an opportunity to move out of Belrose Bowl for a huge count. I do think Matty's got the last bowl though, doesn't he, Matty? Yeah, he's holding his bowl up there at the head. So. Oh, sneaky. Mm. Well, might be just a toucher then from Pack Up. Come on, Lowy. Yeah, mate. Keep an eye on that and let you know what happens as Steve Lowe draws right up for a good one there. Packer does get a toucher, locks on the back bowl and almost bounces back to where it was. So we might see the overarm shot here from Flap Up. You're a foot short. Finish between Jack and Dick, please. <laughs> Lovely manners there from Dylan, wasn't it? If you didn't catch that on the microphones, you're a foot short of Jack, but please finish between the Jack and the Ditch. And it was a Matt Flapper drive. I think that Jack's gone far enough to be out of bounds. It has. So bowls are going to go back in the same direction. Just 
starting to kill a few now. It was the first game against St John's Park and Marylands. They played uh, Wenny Leagues. It was the Sean Thompson and Ben Twistrink. I think 11, 11 ends they killed. Okay. Out of like the last four ends, they killed 11. I suppose it goes for most of our skips in this competition, but both of those two with fantastic drives, Ben and Sean. Well, Thompson's made a conversion for a couple of shots on that far rink there as well. That's two to Marylands. Sneak away again just a little bit. Fifty-four forty-seven now. Our master board. Wing. Oh, well Marquis in action here this afternoon for Club Marylands. Nathan Rice and Aaron Sheriff. For the Belrose Bulls. See Matt Flapper and of course Dylan Fisher here on our streaming rink. All those squads and the team squads available on the Bowls New South Wales website. There's a dedicated page for the Platinum Pennant competition. So you'll be able to see the ladder, all the upcoming fixtures, information about the tipping comp, as well as all of those team squads. Harry onto the mat. Looks like it's one. one shot there to Steve Lowe's first blue bowl. Beats close. What? <laughs> the despair on uh, Aaron Sheriff's face said it all. to go overall. Maryland still leading on all three rinks, but just seven shots the difference. Well, once again, this looks close from Peter Harry. It's definitely getting past his first. Yeah, that's going to be shot. Well played, Peter Harry, and drops right in behind. Got the cap too. Yeah. Well played. Just that extra bit of falling in behind the jack too, mate, just makes it all that much harder for your opposition. Well, let's oh. make it two, and angles are less than ideal there now for Belrose. Let's see Sheriff on the back end here trying to go all the way around the pack to draw a counter. There's no way he wants to leave anything out on his forehand side. Yeah, well those bowls of his, his will get around him. So. Yeah, thanks for listening, Aaron. He's gone on the back end. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason at all for him to make the shot any easier. This is... Just a dead draw for Dylan at the moment. If Aaron's got the right way to get this counts. Yeah, look at this. He's drawn the shot. Great shot. And Dylan's got just that exact same shot on the other hand. What a superb bowl by Sheriff. And we've got a dead draw T to T against the breeze. Played really good weight again. That's the weight to count. Still three, though, to Marylands. Uh, much of the same here from Sheriff. Going out into that sunlight patch. <laughs> so 
looking at angles at the front. Is there something with Rowdy's green bowl through the orange? Just hoping for the right connection if that's the case. Dylan just knows how hard a draw shot this is. It's the time of the game where if he gets out of this one, Richie, it's going to give his team a boost. Oh, definitely the, the momentum will be with them. He misses it. Maryland's hold on to three. I think just the way things have gone might just be enough. So it is firm weight coming. Trying to get the front green bowl. Well, let's have a look. Oh, he got, got the bowl he wanted but doesn't do enough. Just gets the outside edge of it. And that's three to Maryland's. Put it out to 10 with 10 to go. Yeah, it's a big advantage there. It just wasn't a lot on. So a perfect draw shot from Peter Harry. And the second one out of camp. And just turning that up past, the, uh, past his front bowl for two down. And then Aaron Sheriff, perfect draw shot. Held on to the three. Just what, two pretty close efforts there from Dylan Fisher. Well, that's what they skipped out to five in front now. Aaron's rinks. All these rink points are going to be so crucial. Maryland's hard to go on with the win. You can turn a potential eight or eight and a half up to a ten. Those extra points later on in the year are going to be crucial. Likewise for Bill Rose. Naturally, they're going to want to come back and win this fixture. Any points they can get just keeps them in it. With seven rounds to go. a bit quick there. I just wonder if it's a fraction quicker going down that way. A bit of a cheer next door for Matt Flapper. Steve Glidden. Opportunity to get right up close to this. One down, but the Jack's out there now on Cody's rink. And and just one bowl to go there, I think. Yeah. Is that Matty? Yeah. Jeremy Roach. A couple of metres short, first up. Looks a little on the high side here. Right. Just looking over at the scoreboard there are the fives. Uh, Marylands have got two ends to go to uh, try and hit the 100 mark. 99-23 there against Carlo. A cheeky grin there from Aaron Sheriff. Those eight bowls that have come down there, not the greatest from the front ends. Not measuring those ones, Lee? Or? No, well, if they count at the end of this, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that results in a Marylands win. So, I've just been one next door, was it, to Belrose? 16-15 up and back on Cody Packer and Matt Flapper's rink. 
Oh, this is another one in the count, but plenty of room still. Only three quarters of a metre, shot bowl. Hampton or Fisher or probably even both are going to need to play some good bowls here. Belrose really need this end to stop the momentum. That's going to be enough for shot. Pete Harry, big push forward after release. It's got to be close. Does he get the jack? Well, he does. Makes a couple. <coughs> Very hard for Belrose to score multiples here. So Campton pulling up short. Not going to be enough. So there's Mary Lance holding a couple. Aaron just said to us coming past, he's going to draw a front toucher. Thank you, sir. Or something to that effect. Yeah, it's similar. And on the forehand, he's called all his mates down the other side to leave this hand open for himself. <laughs> oh, well, that's in the count. Dylan Fisher, one of these two bowls has to be right on the money. Not sure what happened there on the Thompson rink. Tigers rolled the jacks, so that's obviously. Yeah, so it was one to Thompson, that's out to 23 19. So Fisher gets past the front. Well, oh. kicks the jack through. Well, it's going to be enough. Uh, you can see Aaron turning over the back end here. There's a gap through to the jack. Play two or three yards here. Two or three yards, find the gap to the jack. Promote either one of your own two. Still watching it intently. Just needs to hold on a little longer. His own. Does turn back to his own. So holds one. Can Dylan get to that bowl? We're just checking out the angles whether he gets the plant onto his own toucher, where it ends up in the ditch, and whether that would still be enough for shot. Can he swing around that front green? That uh... yeah, it's going to be hard. I have a feeling it might be back in as well. Try and trial the jack in. He gets back to Aaron's last. He will turn his own toucher forward. He has played some big shots, though. So Dylan Fisher, five behind on your rick. He's going quick. He's trying to get something onto the plant. Well, gets the shot bowl. That's going to be enough for one. What a fantastic shot. There was barely a gap there. Look at that gap on screen, you see. A super shot. shot. Dylan Fisher. Uh, keeps his team in the game. Once again, another conversion. 19-15 on this rink to Sheriff. Next rink across, it's Packer 16-15. And 23-19 on the far rink. So that equates to a nine-shot lead. For Club Maryland, seven ends to play. It's not quite nailing on at this front end for Belrose, just when they need some.
Better yeah. by Heath. Yeah, you can see the excitement from Aaron there protecting this lead of four on this rink. Finishing just in behind, right in that scoring area. Heath Lewis, well, nearly got the jack. Once again, finishing just past. So it is still wide open for Bill Rose. So they were trying to go for the four to get something out of this rink. And that will improve the big board in turn. It's probably done enough. Jeremy Roach. Well, that's definitely the shot. Ran on a little bit, but we just good enough. So battle of the leads. Assuming this is the last end played and it's not a dead end. The average proximity. Steve Lowe ended up spot on a metre. And Heath Lewis at three quarters of a metre. 75 centimetres versus 100. And just pulling up short with that second one. So that situation again where it's getting hard for Bill Rose to get those multiples. And Jeremy Roach, well, if his first one's not shot, this certainly is. Definitely. Great right to the front of the jack. Maryland's holding a multiple on the Cody Packer rink. Cody playing last bowl, drawing out another. Just leaving a couple of bowls short there. However, it is two or three, I believe. Two already removed. Checking the third one at the moment. Nathan Rice and Brad Franklin just checking out. They're going to go to the measure. A two, maybe three to Maryland's there. Well, as we see, that the rattle shot there from Rowdy. Open things up anyway. Three balls left to go for Bill Rose on this rink. So two to Cody's rink. 18-15 with an end of play. Oh, just doing enough for a 10-0 victory as it sits here, Mary Lance. Pete Harry with a... Oh, just drifted past. So, only two or three at the moment for Mary Lance. Those other... Bowls where Pete finished all belong to Maryland's. Maybe they're eyeing up another eight like they got last week. <laughs> Possibly. But Rowdy, does he make it all the way? Well, no, he doesn't. Uh, Pete Harry touches the jack to his own bowl. They, they lie five or six. That um, eight they got last week, I was actually behind the rink when... Um Sean Baker actually had a drive and his bowl jumped and hit the jack and sort of flicked to the side but went through to the ditch. And, um, yeah, I think everyone was surprised that yeah, Pete's turned around and put up the eight. Well, there's no eight on offer now, you wouldn't think. So Dylan goes to the mat. Two or three down. With, still with some room, though. Blackburn with a telling bowl on the far rink against Sean Thompson as well. So Bill, Ro Bill Rose lie a couple over there. Could even be three. As Dylan pulls up short here as well. Uh, forehand draw, Aaron Sheriff. Trying to work Pete Harry's bowl up or just miss it to count with good weight. Push. Well, it's not quite going to make it. Best option you got, Dylan, is to score a one here and try and do something for your team on the big board. Well, that was a 
but Bill Rose Ball went up and through, so it's still going to be Mary Lance holding. Just negotiating now with our team at the moment whether we might be able to move some cameras across to catch the end of the Dylan's bowl, Thompson um, and Blackburn game. Dylan's bowl might actually be shot there. That one on the line, his last bowl. Okay, it might have run up enough, do you think? Maybe. Aaron assessing the situation at the moment. He knows the score on the big board. As it stands, he can't lose his rink and his team's in a pretty good spot. So Matt Blackburn with a big score. They make four on that far rink. So 60 to 53. Blackburn gets back to 23 apiece with Thompson. So Aaron, the conservative route on the draw. He really likes this, stalking it from behind. Does he get enough of that Harry Bowl? He does. Oh, that's enough for shot. Yeah, and you're right, Richie, it was that bowl of fishes that was holding before. So one shot to Marylands. Gets them the rink board here, 20 shots to 15. We won't be far away, folks. We'll get some camera angles on the conclusion of this game. On the big board there now, 61 shots to 53. Four ends to play. There's one end remaining. Cody Packer, 18-15. On his rink. And it is... Is Mary Lands holding at the moment. We'll try and call it the best we can. You might be able to just see the top of the jack on the other side of that white bowl. That maroon bowl just back and right of the jack is Mary Lands bowl. Brad Franklin here from Bell Rose. Well, he sits the bowl, trails the jack. Two. Good shot there from Franco. So Nathan Rice. <coughs> so that tricolour bowl is a Maryland's one. That belongs to Mick Harry. So one or two at the moment. I think they need another toucher here, Bell Rose. That's the call. And it was Cody that won the last end. So Matt Flapper will have the final say here on rink number two. So Franco just overweight. Does he get the inside of Mick Harry's bowl? Well, he kicks the jack. So I'm quite sure how far it went across, but I think it's still one to Belrose. They have first and third. First and second by the look of that. Yeah, that bowl of Tom's. I'm not quite sure how far across it's gone. So, our players in action here. We have Cody Packer for Mary Lance. His side, Nathan Rice, Mick Harry and Tom Rich. And for Bell Rose, it's Matt Flapper with Brad Franklin, Rowan Dennis and Ethan Scott Brannigan. One rink completed. That was Aaron Sheriff, 20, over Dylan Fisher, 15. A rink win for Marylands. It's Packer trying to squeeze between these front bowls. Well, that's certainly one for Bell Rose. That white bowl belonging to Ethan Scott Brannigan. Quite close there for second. I'll give you Bell Rose here, Richie. You've got to be going for at least three. I oh, would think so. And if you can get three here, you halve your board. You get your other side back within five with three ends to play on the overall. Still behind the eight ball, but 
Just trying to give yourself every chance for that rink that's still going. Plus scoring half a point, or if you can find a way to make four. So he's just trying to get to that bowl of Tom Rich. That's the shot here from Flapper. Oh, he's played this good here. Yeah, well, there's three, I'd say. Guys just checking it out at the moment. This must be pretty close. I mean, certainly one to Bill Rose. The other three bowls quite tight. So Jack McShane on that far rink. Letting go. What a beautiful delivery Jack's got. Cody approaches the mat. So Cody pack up. Hard to tell from our vantage point how many shots Belrose currently lie. As Cody plays with a few yards of weight here. There's interest from his guys on the rink. He must be close to something here. Well, it's Boulder Jack. And it's close for shot. Fingers went in the air. Did he do enough to make shot? Both those bowls really close to the Jack. Jack sandwiching in between. Looks like the Jack's sitting on Tom's bowl, but yeah, it's hard to see. The options here for Flapper. Jack it's like they have Kelly. second, third, and fourth. Very hard to see behind where the Bell Rose guys are standing. They wouldn't be aware that we're covering this rink at the moment. There's a tricolour bowl just short of the Jack. You get that bowl through the shot bowl, he makes four. That's got to be the plan. Four or five metres of weight on Flapper's backhand. Try and get that tricolour bowl through the maroon bowl. And he makes four. An important shot coming up. Maryland's holding the rink point as it stands. Wonder if that weight whether he can miss the front one and get to the bowl. Well, it's just gonna go past, so Maryland's hold on. We'll find out if it was one up or one down. Just trying to double check with our players out on the rink. Hopefully the scoreboard about to be turned. And it was Marylands that scored that shot. And Thompson with a big drive on rink number three. Marylands just turning the screws here. Nine shots up, three ends to play. 62-53. When we come down to that far rink. Matt Blackburn. Trying for a couple of huge scores to get back in the game. Speaking of huge scores, uh, Maryland's fives did crack the ton. Uh, 103 to 23, the final score against Carlingford. Huge. What a massive result that is. Very often, uh, very, very uncommon, isn't it, to get that triple figures in pennant. Massive. In the th especially in our three rinks here in New South Wales. Three rink format. So Blackburn down on the head here. Is he trying to kill it or is he just going for the draw? Looks like a draw shot. He's just sailing through. Well, <clears throat> Marylands will win this end. Thompson, just about a metre and a half here with his final bowl to be able to count. Now 
Well, that's going to count two fantastic bowls, Sean Thompson. <coughs> uh, big two. shots at this end of the game. Yeah, two, I believe, there for Marylands. So 11 the difference on the big board. That's all but safe now for Marylands. It's going to come down to this rink point. The Thompson rink, 25-23 in front. Just a reminder about what's going on around the venues here this afternoon. Round four of Platinum Pennant. Just kicked off a few kilometres down the road at Carlingford. They're at home to Raymond Terrace. A little under half an hour away at 4.30pm. We're all up. Play host to Wenny Leagues. At 5 o'clock, it's Cabramatta taking on Tarrant Point. The undercover surface there at Cabra. And at 6 p.m., big crowd will be expected at Engadine as they try and bounce back from a narrow loss last night and take on the undefeated St. John's Park. A 6 p.m. start. And one other game that got underway just after we started here is over at Mount Lewis. And let you know it's currently Mount Lewis in the lead. They currently hold a 47-39 lead over East Maitland. That's on the back of a strong performance from Scott Tholburn, leading Jake Rin 18 shots to eight. Brett Spur also leading 15-10 over Hayden Boykowski. A little bit of glimmer of hope for East Maitland. Josh Walker-Davis 21-14 in front currently over Nathan Wise. So still 18 ends to go on that fixture. But it is Mount Lewis, 47, leading East Maitland, 39. Speaking of that Cabramatta game, uh, that's on later on tonight. They've got food, trucks and everything. Uh, so they must be expecting a big crowd there tonight, Cabra, for that game. I'm told they had a huge crowd last Saturday night for their fixture. One of the beauties of the competition, we reached out to all of our participating clubs and asked them what time they'd like to have their home games. I think some clubs have varied that week to week, depending on other functions and pennant matches that are going on at the same time. I know that match you mentioned last week that Maryland's played in with St John's, they were hoping to have an afternoon yeah. fixture with all their greens. I think they had yeah. another five teams playing at home or another five grades playing at home that day, so... That worked well for them. For others, it's a night fixture. And the team down at Warilla were looking forward to that 4.30 start this afternoon as their other grades of pennant finished up. That Warilla game uh, tomorrow against Cabra will be good. Like a lot of the juniors will be starting to roll up around then so they'll get to see some of the, the good players of the game. And if you can't join us at Warilla in person tomorrow. That will be our featured game on the Bowls New South Wales live stream. Rilla Gorillas up against the Cabramatta Bull Ants. That could be an absolute blockbuster. The rinks we will feature tomorrow in that game. Brendan Aquilina, Craig Roberts, Corey Wedlock and Gary Kelly for Warilla. And for Cabramatta, Jamie Lee Warsnop. James Reynolds, Greg Jeans, and Aaron Wilson. Maybe our stream game there tomorrow. That's a 10.30 a.m. start. Tomorrow morning, all other games in round five, kicking off at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Bill Rose Bulls, I'll be looking for the bounce back tomorrow as they take on Mount Lewis. Engadine, as you said, Richie at home to your Maryland's Magic. St. John's Park, another blockbuster. They host Raymond Terrace. Carlingford at home to East Maitland, as East Maitland do a doubleheader down here in Sydney this weekend. And Tarrant Point at home against Wenty Leagues. So I keep track of the Bowls Link results portal or the Bowls Now app to get all the final round four Results later on this afternoon and this evening. I think our team in the office are working back late tonight to try and get our round four fixtures and ladder updated at the conclusion of the game. 
Also the ladder available via those earlier mentioned applications via Bowls Now or the Bowls Link Results Portal. A couple of the bell rows there, I think, at least two. There's a couple of red bowls. I've had the chance to get some footage on all three rinks this afternoon. Steve Ashdown on the mat now for Bell Rose. From side on, he's not too far away on the weight. Just going to catch the front, though. Ball there from Tomo. Play a few yards on the back end. Turn your own bowl up. Or just miss it. You can work off that Belrose bowl to the side. Does he get to his own? Well, flicks it up a little. I wonder if it's created a little port there to be able to get through. Actually still three for Bill Rose. Perfect one for Bill Rose would be to just fill that gap at the front. Yeah, that's the shot called by Matt Blackburn. Just trying to draw up into that port. Just block off all angles there for Thompson. I think with Tom though, he's got one of the deadliest forehand drives in the sport. Well, Ash down. Is he going to run the full journey? Oh, not quite. Does fill that port. So, but he's three. Surprised to see big weight here from Thompson. Reminder of the scoring formats, exactly the same as New South Wales grade one to seven pennant. Seven points for the master board, one point, one point per rink. You can see on the bottom of the screen there, we have two rinks already completed. Maryland's on the left, that's Aaron Sheriff 20 over Dylan Fisher 15. Cody Packer 19 defeated Matt Flapper 15. Two points already secured for Marylands. It's that few yards of weight from Thompson. What angle does he get? He's going to run up. Straight through. Not Open sure much have changed in terms of the shots. So at least two there for Bill Rose. Almost played it perfect. Just got the wiggle through the gap. It's very hard to count here without doing any damage, is that? He's got to try and perfect draw on the back end. Just discussing, there's a few Maryland's bowls at the back of the rink. Got the option here, Blackburn, to try and draw another counter. And hopefully get in the way of the shot. Or we'll draw to the back of the rink and leave it open for Thompson. But have good position at the back in case the jack moves. He's chosen to try and draw a counter. And he's in that, well, little wiggle off the front port. Might have done both jobs. May have blocked access to the jack and got the little touch off the front to count. So three, possibly four here for Belrose. See that angle on screen with Thompson walking back. He doesn't have clear access to the jack at all, so it needs to be contact. Call the shot, Richie. What's he going to play, mate?
I think, mate, he's, um, yeah, on the back end, you know, look, looking through that last bowl of Blackburns, I'd say. If you get the right angle on that, he can get through the red jack back. Who knows? Even the wider bowl of Jack McShane's, he could get a result off it as well. <laughs> so we've got a few of the players that have come off the rink, started to join in the coverage. So no doubt in the comments, they'll tell us what shot they'd be trying to play. I can see the shot that Mick Harry's playing right now. Mick Harry's working on his grip there behind the <laughs> rink. <laughs> well, there wasn't a lot of weight there. What's he done? It's hard to tell how many it is at the moment for Belrose. Blackburn still has vision of trying to get a huge score here and give the masterboard an option. I think Plum's trying to encourage him just to draw another counter wide. Draw a good counter there, you can make four or five. Get yourself in front on the rink and a outside chance on the master board. Yeah, it's definitely four-handed. He doesn't want to get tangled up with um, with Tomo's bowl there. I think you can count this hand with little to no danger at all. Obviously, you can count on the back end, but playing through a lot of opposition bowls. Uh, Waits reasonably here. And it is four. So, I was drawing for five there as it turned out. So four to Belrose. They do keep that miracle alive of a masterboard win. 64-57. Full count will do it. A huge score this game, isn't it? 27 to 25. Important couple of bowls here to start with. Very tough situation for Belrose to be in. As we said, they're 0-3 to start the season. They really want to try and win that master board. But do you throw all eggs in the basket to try and get that 7 or 8? It's going to be very hard to do. What do you just play to win the rink? Steve Kerr on a great opener there. Club Maryland's coordinator, Tony Wood, on the mat. Another former Victorian is Tony. Previous winner of the Australian Indoor Singles too. Another one of the players, Richie, to beat me along the way. He got me in about the second oh, round right. that year. He won the Aussie <laughs> Indoor. This is another win I got for someone. Yeah. Oh, you've had plenty of them yourself, mate. So, a few runners up along the way, but you've had a fair few wins as well. Yeah. Pretty good silver medal collection. <laughs> one day that silver will be worth more than gold, surely. The economy's change. Through that. Yeah, good bowl by Tiger there. So James Brown on the mat now for Belrose. One shot to Mary Lands. It does secure a rink win for Belrose if they hold on. Well, better to be lucky than, uh, than right on it in some cases. Clarky. Well, Michael Clark, affectionately known as Cash, 
Always chasing the tournaments around Clarkie, around New South Wales. He's probably most one of the most excited people that the cameras have moved across the last couple of events. <laughs> Current member of our over 60 side. Just say, good, good shot there, James Brown. Just a reminder, heading into this round, Marylands were sitting in fourth. So this win will guarantee that they stay inside the top five after four rounds of play. All those other fixtures still ongoing. Plenty of things may change. Round five tomorrow for all teams. Maryland's uh, holding shot there, according to Matty Blackburn. Yeah. Well done, so one of that yellow bowl of Michael Clark. Shane, very nice, deliberate style. Try to add another into the count. Try it up on his forehand. Style to be one. Chance here for Ashdown. Yeah. Oh, got his team interested here. Does he bend down enough? Oh, rub off the side, so. Change of hands requested. Right, just the one at the moment for Mary Lands. Call was to turn the yellow ball up or just finish inside it. You make a second. Very close here. Jack McShane does turn it up. That'll be two. Looking good there now, Michael Clark. <laughs> uh, we have our last chance to give you a score from our other match that's already underway over at Mount Lewis, and they have skipped away the home team. They now lead East Maitland 64 shots to 40. With 12 ends to play. Josh Walker Davis still holding that rink for East Maitland against Nathan Wise. He leads 22 17. But some big scores. Brett Spur, 20 shots to 10 over Hayden Boykowski. And a couple of huge multiples for Scott Solburn. Has him now 27 8 in front of Jake Rin. So Blackburn, two down. Needs to arrive here. Just try and spring the jack or land the yellow bowl. Right-hand side. Just looks outside to me. So Thompson. Trying to land another one in here. They're interested. Just going to beat that wall of bowls at the side. That's enough. So 
Marylands as it stands, hold a 10 nil score line. Two shots behind on this rink, but holding three. Can Blackburn play the ball to get him out of trouble? Keep their chance of a rink point alive. He's got to give it a chance here, Richie, doesn't he? he just oh, definitely, yeah. Play a few yards of weight up through there, spring things out. Have Maryland right at the back. Well, no early with Matt. Oh, it just doesn't want the gap now. Well, that's second shot, I believe. It's time I got here. Does he draw a backhand toucher? Just trying to see through that little porter bowls at the back. Yeah, draw a toucher, Jackson, if you're just underneath. And get to that bowl of Blackburns and lay it out. Might make the three. Our last bowl of the game, Sean Thompson. The masterboard wrapped up. Trying to secure an extra rink point. No, I'm not sure the guys like it. Might be crashing into the front. Does he rumble in here for two? Well, he has. That's going to be two. I think we might be a draw. It is two shots. So that game finishes 27 apiece. So our final score, wow. Maryland 66 have defeated Belrose 57. And that will be nine and a half points to half a point. What a way to finish. A oh, fortunate result to get that draw. Thanks very much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. That wraps up our coverage here at Club Marylands. As we said, the home side, nine and a half to a half victors. 66 to 57 on the masterboard. We're back in action with the Bowls New South Wales live stream at Rilla Bowls and Recreation Club from 10.30am tomorrow morning with a huge fixture.